of hours ago, the head coach, Mark Mangino, getting off here at the stadium. And this is Todd Reesing, the young redshirt freshman quarterback who has just shocked everybody at his abilities. And one of the reasons that the Jayhawks are so excited, because they are perfect. And as we take a look at our ESPNU All-State Standings review, you'll see exactly why. On top is LSU, followed by Oregon, who was just knocked off two nights ago by Arizona. So that obviously will change. And then three Big 12 teams, KU, Oklahoma, and Missouri and it's been over a century since Kansas has gotten off to this kind of start rock chalk Jayhawk it works for the football team too Kansas hasn't been this good this late in well over a hundred years but this edition of the Jayhawks believe that a big 12 championship is within their reach and with that comes a chance for a title that up until this point has been reserved for their brethren of the hardwood but as Kansas in for a Cyclone surprise, Iowa State is showing signs of life under their rookie head coach. The Cyclones are coming off back-to-back -back conference wins, and a victory today could make 2007 a success. Welcome to College Football, presented by Best Buy. Today, from Memorial Stadium in Lawrence, Kansas, it's the Iowa State Cyclones taking on the Kansas Jayhawks. Let's take a look at today at the Big 12 Conference. One game going on, and it's getting late and even closer. Kansas State trying to come from behind against number five, Missouri. Later, Oklahoma State at Baylor, and Oklahoma will be at Texas Tech. Here are the standings of the Big 12 North. And when you look on top, there are the Jayhawks at 10-0, 6-0 in conference play. Missouri Missouri at five and one and of course Iowa State is at two and five they're three and eight in overall competition. Hi everybody Ron Franklin along with Ed Cunningham and coming up a little bit later Jack Aroot down on the sideline. As far as KU is concerned as as I mentioned you know it's been they've never been this good this late. And another surprising thing is they and they've actually depended on a local guy to help provide part of the fuel for offense. Such a great story too. Brandon McAnderson a senior from Lawrence High School right down the road came into the season with 228 total rushing yards in his entire career. He's been on fire the last three games with 61 more yards. He'll go over the thousand yard mark and it's just so fitting for a local guy on senior day here in Lawrence to be the guy that they've really relied on a huge game against Nebraska. He tied the Kansas school record with four rushing touchdowns in that game. When you look at Iowa State offensively, a couple of guys that have been together and roommates for some time, it is Meyer to Blight. That's the combination that has been magic. And they've been great throughout the entire season, but it was never more apparent than last week against Colorado. They found themselves down 21-0 at halftime. And late in the game, Brett Meyer found Mr. Blight three times for touchdowns. They ran off 31 unanswered points for a big win. We just talked about how it was senior day here in Lawrence today. Well, that was on senior day in Ames, Iowa. So a great finish for their home careers. And as far as KU is concerned, uh, at the basketball game night before last, the football team was mentioned in an absolute standing ovation. It must have gone on for a couple of minutes. And right about now, the Jayhawks are preparing to take the field here on this uh, senior Saturday afternoon and an absolutely gorgeous, a perfect day weather-wise for college football. We're going to go away for a moment. When we come back, we'll hear from Jack Aroot down on the sidelines as we prepare for Iowa State and Kansas. Coming up next. As usual on our crew, here's Jack Aroot. Jackson, what do you have for us? Well, Ron, it wasn't quite on the Richter scale, but the earthquake that was heard when Tucson, Arizona resounded here in Lawrence, Kansas. Yes, the upset of then ranked number two, Oregon, has given at least the Lawrence faithful and the Jayhawk Nation reason to believe that this is a game number two against Iowa State. But don't say that to Mark Mangino. Mangino did not talk to his team at all about the upset victory by the Arizona Wildcats. He said, Jack, I've told them to take care of business and to approach the next three games as 1-0 each and every week. He said the biggest difficulty and biggest challenge we have faced is keeping my team from getting distracted by all this BCS talk. 
Okay, Jack, I'll tell you, after visiting with him on the practice field on Thursday, as you look at the weather, absolutely perfect. 62 degrees, the wind is not going to be a factor, and the forecast is for sunny. But more about Mangino and the fact that on Thursday, he told us, boy, his the thing that is paramount in his mind is just what Jack was talking about. He does not want any kind of distractions. He wants his football team to just focus, get locked in, and take care of business. If they do that, then everything's going to be fine. Iowa State has won the toss, and they have deferred. Kick coming down to the 13-yard line, and that's Herford. Herford, big opening, 35, and out to the 38-yard line. And now let's take a look at the Kansas starting offense presented by Best Buy. And here's head basketball coach Bill Self. Bill? Thanks, Ron. Our offense is led by Heisman hopeful quarterback, sophomore Todd Reason. Todd's main target is six foot four inch wideout Marcus Henry. Marcus is coming off a three touchdown performance last week at Oklahoma State. Up front, leading the big boys on the offensive line, senior Cesar Rodriguez. Cesar and all the seniors are playing their last home football game today at Memorial Stadium. Okay, thanks, Coach. Great job. And they will run right behind Caesar to uh, start off their offense this afternoon. That's Brandon McAnderson. Talked about him right at the open. He was second team all Big 12 last year as a fullback in the conference. Yeah. So really surprising that Reesing is a big surprise at quarterback, but this young man a surprise as well. Holding a three-man rush for Iowa State. You see the stack formation, four wide receivers to the top of your screen. And Reesing now under pressure. Throws the ball and gets it complete to the 45-yard line. And that is Briscoe. Now let's take a look at the Iowa State defensive starters. Here's linebacker Alvin Bowen. Starting down in the trenches are two seniors, Bryce Braxman, D-tackle, and Ataba Rubin, otherwise known as Tuba, at nose. At linebacker, my other half, John Banks, a.k.a. How you doing? At corner, Chris Singleton, my little bro, Showtime. Sharp with the carry, going to have the first down, and here comes a flag in late at around the 46-yard line. Well, you, you truly have with Kansas an inside and outside running threat when you have McAnderson at 235 pounds, although he has good speed, but Sharp is the speed. Holding offense, number 65. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat third down. Cesar Rodriguez, the uh, the senior, one of the young men that we uh, were talking about and that the Bill Self was introducing, and an offensive holding call going against KU. Now, one of the things that the Jayhawks really have prided themselves on, and they should have, and that is staying away from uh, the markers, particularly pre snap penalties and things like that. But yeah, they start a, off the afternoon with holding. Least penalized team in the country, and also best in turnovers. So that's right out of the handbook how to win football games. Reesing from a shotgun formation. That's McAnderson. And he is close to the first down, but he's not going to have it. He'll miss it by a couple as they get the big fella out of the backfield. 240 pounds, and that's a load, obviously, for the linebackers to come up and make the hit as John Banks was there defensively. And it's going to be a punting situation. Kyle Tucker will come on for the Jayhawks. And Gene Chiswick, the former defensive coordinator at Texas and Auburn and Central Florida before that, gets a good stop. Uh, sending his defense out for the first, and they really have improved defensively over the last three or four ball games. This is Blythe. Fair catch is called for. Boy, he's looking into a very high sky, but he makes it nicely at the 13-yard line. Now let's take a look at the Iowa State starting offense presented by Best Buy. Here's quarterback Brett Meyer. Brett. Thanks, Ron. It's my pleasure to introduce the Iowa State offense. Starting a wide receiver, we got number one, the best receiver in the country, Todd Blight. On the other side, you got Marquise Esquire Hampton, number 82. And in the backfield, you got Alexander A. Rob Robinson. Anchoring the offensive line with two big boys in the middle, representing D Town and OKC respectively, Randy Stevens and Lee Tibbs. Okay, Brett, thanks very much. Nice job there. They start off with not so good field position, and they're going to.
throw on first down. They get it right out of the backfield and throw quickly to uh, Catlett, who lined up at fullback. Now let's take a look at the Kansas defensive starters. Here once again is head basketball coach Bill Self. Bill? Leading the Jayhawks defense up front is senior defensive tackle James McClinton. They call him the preacher. With the linebacking unit, Mike Rivera has been stellar all season. He'll be around the ball all afternoon. And on our last line of defense, cornerback Akeem Tlaib, everyone's All-American, is one of the best corners you'll see in the United States. Thanks, Coach. And that defense steps up and knocks down the ball carrier, Alexander Robinson, for a gain of maybe one. That's James Holt defensively making the stop. A couple of things to look for. Uh, a couple of guys were banged up against Oklahoma State. One of them was James McClinton. Just watching him on that play, he didn't look like he quite had the movement we expect from him. And Todd Reesing, in that first series, looked like he was a little gimpy on that left ankle as well. You know, nobody wants to talk about injuries, obviously. Mm -hmm. But uh, we noticed that at practice yeah. on Thursday, that it seemed just a little bit tender. Third down, Meyer zings the pass, has it complete for the first down at the 25 to Marquise Hamilton. Now here's today's X Factor presented by City. Unbelievable. Iowa State set a school record against Nebraska when they ran 102 plays. I would say that would be a good formula for today yes. to try to keep Reesing and all of those weapons off for Kansas. And for Kansas, we are, just mentioned a moment ago, they're the least penalized and best turnover margin team in the country. That is exactly why they sit here at 10 and 0. They have plenty of talent, but they just don't hurt themselves. And this is one of those games where you don't want to do that and get, give Iowa State any kind of momentum. Blitz coming. Meyer zings this one sidearm and has it to Blythe. And Todd Blythe being pushed back, but he'll get forward progress to the 35, which should be enough for the first down, a gain of 10. You know, when we were visiting with Robert McFarlane, the offensive coordinator under Gene Chizik for Iowa State, he talked about Brett Meyer, who is making his 48th career start today. The, the highest number of starts in college football for a quarterback. And he had to start all over again. It was basically like he was a freshman. They put in a bunch of adjustments that had to be done non-verbally, where when you see the coverage, you and the receiver have to be on the same page. And it was really like going back to the beginning for Meyer. And he's finally, he's finally figured it out, and he's really been playing well the last three or four ball games. KU showing blitz off the corner. They stay at home. Robinson going to go for very short yardage on first down. And let's check in with, uh, with New York. All right, Ron, Matt Weiner in New York with this nominee for the AT&T ESPN All-America Player of the Week. Ohio State's Chris Beanie Wells was slicker than the field in Ann Arbor. 39 carries, a career-high 222 yards, and a pair of touchdowns. To cast your vote, text the word vote, 87654, and your AT&T wireless phone. Matt, thanks so much. Our situation just underway. First offensive uh, possession by Iowa State. They picked up a couple of first downs. And on second and short, running play hit in the backfield. Boy, penetration on Robinson. And it was just not much that he could do. As, as soon as he got the football, he also was looking at big James McClinton, number 93. You're really high on this young man, yeah, I know. I really think James McClinton, as a senior on senior day, projects very well to the NFL. Bill Young, the defensive coordinator, is the liaison with the uh, pro scouts. And they are a little concerned. He's not big at 6'1", 285. But he is one of the hardest working guys you'll ever be around. And plays with great leverage and great speed. Bill has been around this game for a long time, and he thinks definitely there is a place for him. Mm -hmm. It is third down. Line to make is the 45 of Iowa State. Blitz right up the middle, and they set a screen, and he overthrows it. Robinson, the intended receiver, and because of the pressure by Joe Mortensen, and of course, on the screen, or letting him through a little bit, but nobody even slowed him down, and it uh, created an errant throw. And it was an excellent job by Mike Rivera. Gets his hands up there. It looked like maybe Mortensen and Rivera got a tip on that ball. Really nice job. Rivera is was switched to outside linebacker. He had played the middle linebacker last year. Joe Mortensen was on the outside, but they made that switch, and it's really fit their personnel better. Brantner, a sophomore out of Bettendorf, Iowa. Goes back to punt. Webb is the deep man for the Jayhawks. 
And here's the boot. Just a good one into the slight breeze. Going to turn over and push him all the way back to around the 17-yard line. So a couple of good defensive stops by each club. 47 yards and a kick. We'll be back with more from Lawrence. No score. We welcome you back to Jayhawk Stadium here in Lawrence, Kansas, where the undefeated Jayhawks are up against the Iowa State Cyclones. Guys, we've talked all the time about vertically challenged quarterbacks like Todd Reese, who is so short, sometimes it's difficult for him to see over his own lineman. Take a look from Todd Reese's viewpoint on this first down. Okay, Jack, I like this idea. We talked about it on the practice field on, uh, on Thursday, and you'll see... He's just going to pitch this one back. McAnderson, and that's close to a 10-yard gain on the play as Jesse Smith will make the tackle. I believe a flag came down late over on the sideline there. Derek Fine with a good block on the play, number 85. If this is on Kansas, well, this most goes, goes against the X factor. Offense, number 80, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Yeah, they got Desmond Briscoe. Well, this is most un KU like. Yes. I knew if we bragged on him as far mm -hmm. as uh, just any really uh, economical when it comes to uh, to the yellow markers, and today they've already gotten a couple. Well, they, they average only 31.4 penalty yards per game, so they're almost there already, and we're at 10 minutes left. Yeah, there are 20 yards of penalties with 10 minutes left in the first quarter. Very unlike Kansas. McAnderson has five, has ten, and he is going to be about five yards short of the first down as James Smith will make the tackle. Again, Derek Fine, number 85, with a paving block for the ball carrier, McAnderson. Now, Derek Fine, another senior. There's a lot of these guys we're talking about playing their last game. A little bit of a trap block, a little cross action, and Fine has always been a very good blocking tight end, but he's really worked himself into a good receiving tight end. He's now the KU leading receiver ever for a tight end. Racy. Complete tackle broken at the 40, and across the 45-yard line, it'll be first down, and it's Dexton Fields, the junior out of South Oak Cliff of Dallas. 22 yards in the play. Well, Todd Racing has really gotten it out. That left ankle... He's not 100%. Sometimes you limp because the tape is so tight on that, but you can see he's he's just really gingerly moving around, and that's his plant foot. You can see he's starting to fall back. As his arm gets tired late in the game, throw some out routes. Sometimes that ball might be late and it could be picked off. Sets in the pocket, steps up, gets by a tackle, then zings it out, and he's got the big fella, Henry, and Marcus Henry will go inside the 40-yard line. That's good for 13 more yards on this play. Tackled by James Smith. Well, the nickname for Todd Reesey by Coach Mangino is Sparky. Last year against Colorado, he was redshirting. They pulled his redshirt off at halftime, and he sparked them to a victory. And you can see why. They had, they had a starter in Kerry Meyer, and they opened up the comp competition, and Todd Reesey won it. And uh, on that bad ankle, moving around like that and throwing back across the field, you can see why he won the job. Best field position of the afternoon for the Jayhawks. Carry Meyer into the ball game, and they reverse it. Pitch was not to Meyer, but to Herford. And Herford will take it to the top of your screen to around the 33-yard line. Little wrinkle there as Meyer comes in motion. Looks as though they're going to run a straight option play. Well, they, they do so many different things out of this spread, and, and what's good about it is they, they really are balanced in their offense. This is the only offense in the country that is in the top 20 in both rushing and passing yards. And they do it by mixing it up a lot with looks like we just saw. Second down at about four. They look back over toward the sideline on a check with me. Blitz coming off the corner, and he's going to be sacked at the 39-yard line. Linebacker Jesse Smith gets him, and it's the first time that they have gotten to Reesing today. Well, this is a nice job, and there, there was a missed assignment on the left side of the offensive line 
and McAnderson on that side. They had enough guys. Watch as the offensive line comes down. He's just going to run straight through. Nobody picks him up. Somebody's got to be there in that slide protection. McAnderson goes to block the outside man. He's got to block the inside man first because he's got the faster path to the quarterback. Third down. They need to take it to the 28 and a half yard line to keep this drive going. Got a man open, and that's Henry. And Henry will not have the first down, but he will give them forward progress to the 33, which would make this in the vicinity of a 50-yard field goal. And the career long for Scott Webb is 49 yards. And with a punt, if it goes in the end zone, you don't gain much. So going for it on fourth is a pretty good option here, and it looks like that's what they're going to do. Yeah. that's Now the go-to guy is number 86, who has caught a couple of passes on this drive. Marcus Henry is 6'4 at least. And in fact, he looks taller than that and has great speed, runs under a 4'4. He is at the bottom of your screen, number 86. Blitz coming up the middle. Greasy runs out of harm's way, and he's going to take it for the first down. Goes out of bounds at around the 26-yard line. And you can see him hobbling on that ankle and the heavy tape job that he has mm -hmm. on the left ankle. Well, that's one of the hardest things when you're at full speed. It's, it, you're fine if you're running straight ahead. Cutting is hard and slowing down, believe it or not, because when you go to slow down, you're putting more pressure on that ankle. See, he's fine once he gets going. He definitely has a little hobble in his giddy up, but he just doesn't want to slow down too fast because it'll put too much pressure on that left ankle. Let's see, eighth play of the drive. It started back at the 18. Nick Anderson is going to be close to eight yards on this play as he takes it back into the short side of the field. Tackle was made by James Smith, the free safety. Sophomore out of Council Bluffs, Iowa. This team is so well coached. What an excellent job by Desmond Briscoe. True freshman wide receiver on the outside. Watch him come down and get a crack block that opens the outside lane for the running back. He just read the cornerback perfectly, got a deep cleater, and that's what opened up the outside. Nice block. Jake Sharp checks back into the lineup, number one, and he will join Mac Anderson in the backfield. And again, they go from a shotgun formation. But they throw a quick pass into the flat. That's Fields, and Fields is going to walk it in. Touchdown, KU, 17 yards. Uh, the waving week here in Lawrence, Kansas, says the Jayhawks get on the scoreboard first. Scott Webb to attempt the extra point. Unbelievable job again blocking downfield by Desmond Briscoe. Extra point is up and it is good. And again, that thing of everybody understanding their assignment and everybody doing it to perfection. Touchdown KU, 17 yards, and they go on top of Iowa State, 7 0. So we'll take a break. We'll be back with more from Lawrence after this. The fog of PHOG. Uh, fog Allen Fieldhouse has seen some some great victories uh, and when you stop and think that the basketball program here what the football team is seeking that basketball program has won 50 5-0 conference championships since they have been playing in the intercollegiate athletics and to put that into perspective the last conference championship KU won in football was 1968 with John Riggins as their running back so it's been a while since they've been at this level in football I can tell you this nobody is any happier about the success that this team has had than the basketball team as a reverse on the kick return and Iowa State's going to have good field position out at the 40 yard line. Let's talk about Gene and let's check in in New York and uh, John Saunders. John. Ron we've got this Ford Center minute powered by Vizio 104th meeting of Michigan and Ohio State and this one belonged to Beanie Wells. 62 yards on this touchdown run had 222 in the game gives them over 1400 for the season Ohio State clinches a berth in the Rose Bowl meanwhile Chase Daniel Yark one yard pass to Martin Rucker here remember of course that big game between Kansas and Missouri coming up next week John thanks very much in this part of the world even though they both had games obviously today this one now and the the K-State uh, game with Missouri is is just about done 
but it was like people were ignoring this Saturday. Yes. All they want to talk about is next weekend at Arrowhead Stadium. And I, I was very concerned about what may happen uh, for Missouri fans because uh, you know Ron Prince was going to have that crew ready. The governors of the two states have already made bets about the game. And if I'm Gene Chizik, I was showing these guys the front pa page of the paper today, which was already talking about next week's game. Didn't even mention today's game. <laughs> Quick pass out of the backfield, and that is to Barkema, the tight end. Got to be just a little bit short of the first down. It'll be third down. Let's call it about two. And let's uh, check in with uh, more on that story from Jack Aru. Yeah, and I think that's one of the reasons, guys, why Mark Mangino is so upset when you mention BCS. When you mention anything other than this particular game. Remember, the students started camping out a week ago to get tickets, not for this game, but student tickets for the game at Arrowhead Stadium. And all of a sudden, this game became kind of an afterthought. I got to tell you, when the students first came in here about 45 minutes ago, it was eerily silent. Now they're starting to pick it up just a little bit. You know, they're better because this Iowa State team has improved immensely. Throwback, and uh, Meyer can only just throw it away as Mike Rivera was coming really strong with some pressure, and it's going to be punting time for Iowa State. But Iowa State has won their last couple of ball games, and uh, Coach Chizik has really started to turn this uh, this team around. Yeah, the, you, when you, whenever you go in and install an entirely new program, Dan McCarney left and didn't leave the program in bad shape. He, McCarney had gone to five bowl games in his last six years, but they changed all of the systems around, and it just took a while for some guys to start getting into that system. And the Kansas coaches talked about, you watch them through the season on tape, and it uh, looks like they may go well, up and go they, for it. No, this is, they, I mean, they might. But this is the same alignment that they had last time. And now Iowa State's going to call a timeout. So we'll take a timeout with them. 4.24 left in this opening quarter. It is Kansas 7 and Iowa State nothing. And we are back. Fourth down. And you see the formation that Iowa State is in. Now, will they shift to punt? Yes. Number 13, Brantner. Drops about 15 yards behind the center. Here's the boot. Another good high hanging spiral. And it's going to bound at the two. Now it went over the cone, so it'll be a touchback. And let's check in with Matt Weider and more on the LSU Tigers. Matt? All right, Ron, Taco Bell update from Oxford, Mississippi. Wild start to the LSU Ole Miss game. 14 points in 14 seconds after a Rebel punt return for a touchdown. It's Trendon Holiday. The LSU. Sprinter, 98 yards down the sideline, 14-7 there. Missouri wrapping things up in Manhattan, 49-32, set to move up in the standings. Okay, Matt, thanks very much. I can tell you from experience, uh, LSU Ole Miss, long way from over. That rivalry has been a great one for years. Fields catches the ball, football is loose, and now across the 32-yard line, Ruben on the tackle. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 43. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Get Fred Guerin. Well, I thought it came loose, but it did not. Yeah. It was just a good second effort and a broken tackle. Spun the head around and didn't let go. That's why they called that. Even though Garen didn't do too much with it, it's when you don't let go of it that you get that personal foul. And you, as well as Kansas played on their last offensive drive, you don't want to be giving them too much help. So it's a first down at the 46 yard line. Jake Sharp in the ball game, number one. He'll get the handoff. And it's going to be knocked down for no gain by Ruben. Ruben, a senior out of Pensacola, Florida. It's 6'3", 320 pounds. Jake Sharp, such a good talent as a sophomore. And the upgrade of talent that Mark Mangino and his, his staff brought in. He was the number one recruit in the state of Kansas. Very fast guy. He was a three-time long jump state champion so very explosive a nice compliment to McAnderson and watching him in person on the field uh, practice field on Thursday uh, 
I knew he was quick, but he was extremely quick. That pass intended for Meyer, and, and it is overthrown, but the flag has come down in the secondary. And that was Jesse Smith, who just all over his back. Yep. There. That's, that's tough duty. You know, Meyer, who, of course, was a starting quarterback last year and is the backup quarterback. Pass interference. Defense, number 54. It's the first down at the spot of the foul. First down. And so your Mike linebacker has to walk out and cover right in the middle of your screen and just got himself a little out of position and put that hand up because he knew he was beat. You know, it, there was another man just beyond him, and it might be a really good penalty because Meyer might have taken <laughs> that right. thing the distance. No, not 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 bad at all, actually. I think. Quick throw, got it complete at the 40. Let's call it the 39-yard line. It's complete to Fields. And speaking of Fields, let's go down to the sideline. Here again is Jack Aru. Jack. Well, guys, we've all been speculating as to the condition of that ankle with Tom Reese. I watched him during that defensive series when he was off the field. Did not get any sort of treatment whatsoever other than debriefing with his coaches up in the press box. But the thing I'm noticing now is he isn't quite as gimpy. Could it be that that tape is loosening up just a little bit? Yeah, it does when you sweat. You know, when you start to sweat and run around, and uh, you basically start with a cast, and it does start to loosen up. Jake Sharp again. This time he takes it to the 35-yard line. And a reminder that uh, near the conclusion of today's game, we will uh, select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet uh, will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. They're, they're going to take a timeout. I believe they're going to bring the sticks out for a measurement. But going back to that ankle for Reesing, as long as he doesn't tweak it again, what will happen over the course of the game is it will start to loosen up some more. And uh, right now, not really bothering Reesing. He's just playing wonderful and even able to get out of the way of uh, some, some traffic. First down, KU. Reesing, 8 of 8, 93 yards and a touchdown. There you see those numbers, 8 of 8, 93, and, uh, and one touchdown. One of... A number of young Texas quarterbacks from the state of Texas uh, playing in the Big 12 Conference. Again, from the shotgun formation. Got it complete, and that's Meyer, the backup quarterback, but yet they're using him at tight end or using him at wide receiver. And that's good for 19 yards. And I'm not sure anybody on this ball club deserves the unselfish award any more than, than him. Well, think about what. Kerry Meyer has been through. He was the starting quarterback. He's an in-state guy from Kansas, starting quarterback last year. He loses his job to, of all places, a Texan, you know, so he has to suck that in and say, I'm the local guy who can't go, and they ask him to change positions and no quarterback, and he hasn't complained one time. He practices with the first string at wide receiver, and then he flops over, and he practices yeah. the second string at quarterback. In fact, he got a, quite a few reps at quarterback on Thursday. Reesing very wisely is just going to throw this one together. Tell you what, Iowa State has done a nice job of bringing pressure. Alvin Bowen, they call him Ace, was the man applying the pressure that time. Mm -hmm. and, and I would think that Wayne Bolt, the defensive coordinator for Iowa State, has seen exactly what we're seeing and saying, if we can get some pressure on Reesing, he's not the guy he was the first eight or nine weeks of the season, so active with his feet. But he's just not quite that fast. So I would suspect that Iowa State's going to keep bringing pressure all night. Man at the top of your screen is number 86, Marcus Henry. Keep an eye on him. Here's the location on the field where they'd like to go to him. But they're going to go back the other way. Caught by Fields. Touchdown number two for Fields. Nice job of blocking by the offensive front for the Jayhawks. Well, they did have a fade route set up up top to Marcus Henry, but it was pretty well covered. And Fields just sat down and made a cut, and it was such an accurate throw that he was able to spin away from the defender and finish it for the touchdown. Extra point attempt by Webb is up, and it is good. Let's take a timeout. 157 left in the opening quarter. Our new score, Kansas 14 and Iowa State nothing. We'll be right back. 
Well, before this capacity house, uh, coming to the waiting moments of the opening quarter, and it's 14 to nothing in favor of the home folks. And uh, just like Ed said, that last score was uh, was made to look pretty easy. Reesing now 10 of 11, 128 yards, and two touchdowns. This kick is going to go three yards deep. Fumbled, and now returning short of the 20-yard line is Moses. Well, you mentioned the protection. It all starts up front, but Watchfields is just going to go set down, and unfortunately, it was a bad angle coming back by Devin McDowell. The ball was put to the outside, and he spun back in there. McDowell, when he went to plant, just slipped and fell. Yeah. So you, you, they just they stress you in so many ways. You know, Marcus Henry is such a good player. Desmond Briscoe has really become a guy that they've relied on. And here's Dexton Fields, who's probably the third guy, has two touchdowns. It's just they do such a good job. And uh, Mark Mangino calls it his ensemble cast. They all get involved. KU comes with a blitz off the right side. Passes uh, thrown complete for short yardage to Summerall. Arnaud is in the ballgame at quarterback, and this is not a surprise. He is a freshman out of Ames, Iowa, and we were told that he would come in in the third offensive series, and this is the way the coaches want this to happen. They want him to continue to get live experience mm -hmm. in conference games. Well, you got Brett Meyer, who's a senior, so you have to start looking at the young guys and start thinking about next season. Robinson cracks it off the right side for a couple of yards and it's going to be third down and they still need to take it to the 29 for the first Mike Rivera with a couple of stops in his opening quarter today. Well the Missouri Kansas State game has now gone final over in Manhattan just down 70 a little way and uh, Missouri we talked to those folks this week they were very nervous about going into Manhattan kids they have not won there since 1989 so a big victory for Missouri and if Kansas can stay the course here there's going to be a huge one over in Kansas City at Arrowhead next Saturday night third down you see the blitz coming quick pass right over the middle that is a good pitch and catch Hamilton on the receiving end and that is good for the first down for the Cyclones you know, uh, Arnaud, the redshirt freshman you were talking about from right there in Ames, his dad was a cornerback back in the 80s at Iowa State, John Arnott, but very talented guy. And they also have another guy that they're going to be looking at come spring, Philip Bates, mm -hmm. a true freshman that we'll see at wide receiver. So there's going to be a lively battle between Austin Arnott and Philip Bates. Well, uh, and, and you... Uh you hit the nail on the head when you talked about uh, Meyer and the, the difficult situation with a new staff coming in, a new offense to learn. We'll talk more about it in a moment. That is the end of the opening quarter. Our presentation of college football will continue. The bad news and the bad news is Jimmy Johnson, who took a commanding lead with his third consecutive win last week, won the poll yesterday. So he'll be sitting on the poll, and if he leads at least one lap, because he'll get some points for that, as long as he finishes 19th or better, he'll run away with it. But that's a tricky place to run. You get any kind of damage, it can slow you down. But uh, things looking pretty good for Jimmy Johnson. He seems to kind of have just a tad of momentum on his side. Well, here's a piece of trivia that, that you didn't know was not on that sheet to help you out with the NASCAR <laughs> stuff. There's some links right there at that track that have some huge bass in them. <laughs> I, I know some guys have gone down there and done fishing shows. And uh, they catch some very big fish there. Come, comes from the guy whose hobby is fishing, not NASCAR. <laughs> Arnaud remains in the ball game at quarterback uh, with the first down by the Cyclones. They trail it 14 to nothing and need to get something going offensively. That defense has already had to play probably way more than Coach Chiswick would like to have seen. Play action. He's going to throw. Going to go long and a man out there. And it is gathered in at the 30-yard line by Marquise Hamilton. 46 yards in the pass play and a nice job of blocking by the offensive front. Well, and we, when talking to Robert McFarlane, the offensive coordinator, earlier in the week, he said they would take some shots at a keep to leave to leave 
an all-conference type corner double move spun him around what an excellent route by Marquise Hamilton faked like he was going to run to the corner and you know that Tlaib who's a very aggressive player is going to bite on yeah. that and Hamilton did an excellent job on that double move corner back to the post and Tlaib got spun all the way around excellent call excellent throw and Hamilton is a big fella to bring down also he's 220 pounds got a man open again this time in the right flat that's Robinson out of the backfield and he's going to have about four yards in the play. Jack Aroot. Ron, early this morning, I had the good fortune to visit with Coach Chiswick a little bit. And we were talking about just what you saw in those last two plays. He said one of the things that's happened over the course of this season is a team that has been maybe challenged a little bit with talent after those last two victories. In fact, he said it started at the, with the Texas loss, are beginning to believe that not only can they come from behind, but they can play with anyone. He said what we as coaches had to learn to do is maybe take a few more chances. Yeah, and and it, a bunch of guys pointing at each other, but it, number 60, five-yard penalty, repeat second down. Brandon Johnson, the center, and it's good to see that the coaches have done that and started to let these players go a little bit. But it's interesting that it's Austin Arnott, the backup redshirt freshman, who has come in a couple of times this year and played very well. He played excellently against Kansas State. He actually led two scoring drives. So this is not new territory for a redshirt freshman. It's a planned substitution, but you've got all the trust in the world in him to take throws like that. Todd Blythe splits out to the left side of the goal with a running play, and Robinson will have nothing. Is being pushed back. In fact, he's going to lose about three yards in the play. Mike Rivera again defensively. Go back a, a moment ago to that Brandon Johnson penalty. The pre-snap pen penalty is what always gets you. And this is just excellent penetration. What a nice job by Khalid Blakesley. Got good penetration finished up by Rivera. But now you find yourself so far behind the chains because of that penalty on Johnson. It's third down, and they've got to take this thing all the way to the 13-yard line to pick up a first. Looking intercepted. Josh Raven stepped in front and made the pickoff, and the difficult thing... Muhammad, I beg your pardon. Yep. The difficult thing for Iowa State to have to uh, to stomach here is the fact they were in range at least to come away with three points, get something on the scoreboard. Well, Muhammad did an excellent job of reading the eyes of the young quarterback. Arnott took him there the entire time, and Muhammad cut right underneath the slant. An excellent job by Sadiq Muhammad. To read those eyes and he took a little bit of a chance you know he didn't play the man he played the ball but came away with the interception and uh, Kansas the best team in the country coming into today Iowa State was minus six so now minus seven on turnovers Kansas was 20 on the plus side now plus 21 best in the country McAnderson takes the pitch Running low for a big fella, but protecting the football, and he'll have the first down as Jesse Smith made the tackle. If you're Iowa State defensively, I think you have to take a couple of chances here. I, I just, the way that Reesing, even on that bad ankle, is playing, uh, and the way that they are running as Anderson comes over, looking like he might be favoring something in his arm, but if I'm Iowa State, even on rundowns, I think maybe a blitz, try to get a turnover. I, I just wouldn't want to see Kansas go right down the field here. It's Derek Fine, number 85 in motion. And they hand it off to Jake Sharp, and Jake wiggles his way out to the 37-yard line. Really interesting. What KU does seems very, very simple, but... I mean, they, they don't razzle and dazzle you with a bunch of motions, and they do spread you out uh, with their formations. And like the hurry-up that they're running right now, but boy, they make it work. Sharp tries to turn the corner. That's a nice defensive play by John Banks, senior out of East Moline, Illinois. Well, you know, we were talking to Ed Warner, the offensive coordinator for Kansas, and Ed spent 13 years as an offensive line coach at the collegiate level, and 
He said, you know, one of the things that I have to do with this offense, we can be multiple, but the blocking schemes have to be not not simple, but we don't have to have a bunch of different stuff, especially for the guys up front, because if they have to think, they'll jump off sides, all those pre-snap penalties, and they won't be as aggressive. So it looks very complicated, but at its core, it's a pretty simple blocking scheme that they run on a consistent basis. Racing. He's going to run for it, and he will have it. Jesse Smith finally caught him from behind, but not before Todd Reesing, the sophomore out of Lake Travis High School, just north of Austin, Texas, picks up the first down. And let's go down to the sideline again, Jack Aroot. You know, a reporter here locally asked Todd Reesing a couple of weeks ago, is there anything, anything that shakes your confidence? Like an injury, something like that. He looked him straight in the eye and said, nothing. He says, yeah, I make mistakes now and again. He says, but you face adversity every game. You face challenges. You can't let it get into your head. You've got to live existential. Glad he knew what existential meant. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and you can see that with his ankle. You can tell he hasn't let the ankle affect him. It hasn't gotten into his head and affected his psyche at all. The pass juggled for a moment by Fields. Well, now it's time for our Aflac trivia question. This week's question, who was the last Kansas Jayhawk quarterback to play in the Pro Bowl? Wow. Pro Bowl. Well, that's a, that's Bobby a Douglas one. was here long after John Hadle. I shouldn't say long after, but after. And I, I know that Hadle did, but uh, did Douglas? I don't believe so. And did he as a quarterback also? Did he play running back some for, so, yeah. for the Bears as well? Anyway, we'll give you the answer in just a minute. Pass right over the middle, and that is uh, gathered in, and the hit made immediately on Ingram. Well, right now, Todd Reesing is just putting on an absolute clinic. He's 12 of 13, and that one pass that was incomplete was a throwaway. Yep. Uh, he just, and, and he's already, he's extending his record of uh, attempts without an interception. He came into the game with 179 attempts without an interception, so he's growing that record, which is obviously very key to Kansas success. Cantrell, the center, out over the football, and again, they go from a shotgun formation. Iowa State showing blitz in the middle. They stay at home. Reesing gets it over the middle, and that's Henry. Marcus Henry can fly. He's gone. 10, 5, touchdown Jayhawks. 52 yards. Henry is a long drink of water. But the best time that he has gotten in the 40 is under 4-4. So for a gentleman who's about 6-5, that's motoring. And he showed it right there. He's very good after the catch, too, which is unusual for a tall, long receiver to be as good in space. You know what his head coach said about him? He said, yep, he is a great football player. And probably what we all love most about him, he is such a man of few words. His he nickname said, is <laughs> Mute. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they call him. In the you know, room. he went. He went to uh, media day uh, when when all the the teams uh, were brought together in the Big 12 conference this year. And he said he was wonderful, probably more than he has talked in his entire career here at uh, at Lawrence. When you play like that, you don't have to say. That's exactly right. He just what he does on the field does his talking. Boy, 21 to nothing. The Jayhawks have jumped on top. Let's take a timeout. 8:42 left until halftime. Henry with the touchdown. And we're back in Lawrence. Uh, show us what happened here. Well, we're talking about Todd Reesing. Watch the free man as John Banks as he comes. And Reesing's just going to continue to drift and wait for Henry to clear. This is, he knows he has an unblocked man. Iowa State is bringing an all-out blitz. He knows he's got the unblocked man. So he just continues to back away from it, knowing that Henry is on the drag and is going to come open. The unfair thing for Iowa State is you're selling out your blitzing. And, and I think it's the right idea against the Gimpy quarterback but when you have a guy like Reese who just has such a feel for the game and knows what's going on, he makes you pay, and he knows where Henry's going to be. And there's not many corners who are going to run the entire across the entire field covering that gap. Return from the 10. This is Summerall. 
breaks off one tackle then it's going to be dropped at around the 22. Let's go down again to Jack Aru. Jack? Well, you know, it's only by happenstance that Marcus Henry even made it here to Kansas. Back in 2004, he had already packed his bags, was going to go play at Northeastern Oklahoma Junior College with his brother. Had a big smile about it. And then a friend of his, he never found out who it was, sent a highlights tape to Mark Mangino of his play in an all-star game. Guess what? Mangino liked what he saw, offered old Mute a scholarship, and the rest is history. <laughs> and what a great game for Marcus last week. He goes back to Oklahoma, his yeah. home state, Oklahoma State. He has eight catches for 199 yards and three touchdowns, including an 82-yarder. It couldn't have been a better end to his career back home in Oklahoma. Pressure coming. Pass is thrown complete to Catlett. And Catlett's going to be stopped at around the 29-yard line. And let's check in with New York and an update on Tennessee. Matt? Hi, Ron. Ron. Verizon Wireless update from Knoxville. Tennessee on the comeback against Vanderbilt. Eric Ains to Josh Briscoe made it 24-16. A Vanderbilt win would make them bill eligible and make Georgia the SEC East champion. And Arkansas leading Mississippi State by a couple of touchdowns. McFadden, not huge numbers yet. Okay. Boy, Tennessee... Uh... So being surprised by Vanderbilt trying to make a comeback play action and with the running play Robinson is uh, not going to go very far he's going to be short of the first down as Bates this is a place here where you're getting into that territory third and one for Iowa State you're down 21 nothing. I think you need to just throw caution to the wind and pack them in and maybe think about something with Blythe. Blythe who just came into the game sneaking out of there and trying to go long. They've already shown that a keep to lead will bite on some stuff. So maybe think of a play action here and try to take a uh, try to take a shot and see if you can't get quickly. Now it's third down and short. They only need a couple of feet. J.J. Bass in the backfield. Timeout. And Iowa Meyer State is going to call a timeout. Out of the half. And we'll take the it with him. 7.27 left until halftime. Kansas continues to lead 21 to nothing. Come on back with funnel cake. Not sure if we uh, ever had funnel cake. Oh, um, well. You don't know what you're missing. You should go down and try one. It's basically a big donut. Yes. <laughs> it's what you're dealing with. Our situation, third down and very short, less than a yard. Kansas on top, 21 to nothing here. The line of scrimmage very quickly, and they're going to run it. Robinson will have the first down as he smashes it way at the right tackle. And it was Mortensen defensively for the Jayhawks. Well, Iowa State has been in this position before. And as a matter of fact, they were in this position last week against Colorado. Came out in the first half and just couldn't get anything going at all. Uh, ended up running off 31 straight points in the second half. So this is this is a position that they've been in and know how to claw out of. So don't think that the Iowa State confidence is shaking too bad right now. Well, you can see they outscored Colorado at 31 to 7 in the second half last week. That's Blythe in motion. Pressure and he is sacked by Mortensen. And now here come flags down, and we could have a face mask against Kansas. Personal foul. Face mask. That's a huge one. Well, two penalties early against Kansas, and now this one. Yeah. So that's 35 yards in penalties against the Jayhawks. And instead of second down and about 20 from the 21, now you've got first down and 10 from about the 48-yard line. That is a huge change. You're looking at 25, 26 yards difference in that play ball being placed down at the 48 yard line of Iowa State so the Cyclones have got plenty of working time here clock runs at six minutes and 48 seconds showing until halftime they're down 21 to nothing 
They had an intercept on that last series rather than kicking a field goal. See if they can get something on this trip. Meyer. Way overthrown near sideline. Hamilton, the intended receiver there. Well, they're, they're definitely working some double moves over on Atib Khalib, who's lined up to the field mostly, to the left side of the defense for Kansas. And, and this is why, because you can take him. This was earlier in the year against Jordy Nelson, one of the best receivers in the country. But you can't get by him because he's so aggressive. But then the flip side of that, his aggressiveness, last week against Oklahoma State and in that Kansas State game, made interceptions to basically seal those games. Flag comes down. Crowd doesn't like it, but he did. He hit him out of bounds. That is Stuckey. Daryl Stuckey, a sophomore out of Kansas City, played at Washington High School. And the other thing he did, ducked his head. He, he led with his headgear. And so I agree it was out of bounds, but watch the head duck by Stuckey right there at the end. Personal foul. Defense. That's the right call. And I know the fans in Lawrence aren't happy about it, but all of a sudden Iowa State with two big penalties is in business. Yeah, when you got 30 yards uh, in penalties. That's, I mean, you can get him for either one later with ducking the head, but you start to see all these guys getting injuries. And, and this is a position where you may start thinking about Blythe. Philip Bates, Bates, number eight into the lineup. Ed, uh, he is the second man out to the right. He is the backup quarterback, and they're going to give it to him on the reverse. And Bates is going to be knocked down for a loss back at the 35-yard line by Mortensen. These linebackers, Joe Mortensen, who's a little gimpy. Excellent job. Just read it perfectly. Standing right in the middle of the formation. He didn't buy the fake. He, he held home. He held home. And the coaches talk about this young man. Bill Young, who's been at it forever as a defense coordinator, said this is the most intelligent defense he's ever coached. And Joe Mortensen, a guy who spends a ton of time studying tape, looking at tendencies, and really brings it out to the game field. Second down and 13. Blitz coming off the corner. And the pass is knocked down. Incomplete at the 22. And that's uh, Talib who got a hand on it. That was an excellent job of Talib. And something that all young corners should be watching. When Talib came over the top of Blythe to knock that ball down, he took his left hand and actually put it up in the air so as not to get called for pass interference. Watch. The left hand, how it's he throws it back yeah. so he can spin his body, get more in front, and also not get caught. Because sometimes, you know, if you, even if you just put that hand there, they'll call it. That's an excellent job of playing the technique. Third down, they need to take it to the 22-yard line. Blitz coming off the corner. And Iowa State throws in that direction. Summerall on the catch and then a good stop after a three-yard gain. It's going to be fourth down Cyclones. And I think they probably go for it here. They are not confident right now in their kicker, Brett Culbertson. This is outside the range that they're comfortable. And if you punt the ball and it goes into the end zone, you're only going to gain 11 yards of field position. So right now you're at fourth and nine. I think this is the right decision. Number eight, Philip Bates has come back into the lineup at wide receiver. Now whether they would run a trick play uh, in a situation like this, I don't know. But remember, he is the third team quarterback. He's the second man to the bottom of your screen. Thanks, Ed. Meyer, deep over the middle, and he's got Bates there. Yeah, they got hold of Yeah, that's mm -hmm. going to be pass interference as Bates was the man that they were intending the ball for. Strozier is the man who's flagged. Yeah, Strozier had uh, his hand on him the whole way. I'm not quite sure why. Strozer just would not let go of Bates. He was running stride for stride with him, and he just had the back of his jersey and wouldn't let it go. Holding defense, number 26. Ten-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Automatic. First down. Watch the left hand of Strozer. See, it just sits on his back, sits on his back, and he just never lets it go. Well, you can see the jersey mm -hmm. even blousing yeah. from, uh, from the holding. Yeah. And yeah. so the ten-yard penalty brings with it a first down. <laughs> 
Unbelievable. That's, so that's three penalties, penalties on yeah. this drive that have resulted in first downs. That one on fourth down. And really, no reason for that hand to be on there. The best, the least penalized team in the country doubling up their, their season number, and we're not even at halftime. So first down, the ball resting around the 21 pass to Robinson in the flat at the 15 and finally bumped out of bounds and they say he stepped out actually prior line so it's going to be at about the 13 and a half Rivera got a hand on him pushed him out and Robinson a young man that they really expected big things out of Gene Chizik was so excited about this young man coming out of training camp but as a freshman he just wasn't quite used to the game speed so they put him on some special teams let him get a feel for the game that way and he really has been uh, an explosive player for them down the stretch Blythe in motion give it inside and there's the young man that Ed was talking about Alexander Robinson freshman out of Minneapolis Minnesota Hazelhorst making the stop for KU clock runs we've got four and a half minutes left until halftime well a keep to leave has been lined up to the right of the Iowa State formation for every snap so far I would think about bringing Blythe over to the other side and throwing a jump ball to the other side over Chris Harris although Harris is a good cornerback he's shorter at six feet and a true freshman although Harris is now coming off the field because Kansas is expecting a running play I think you maybe try to take a throw into the end zone here in some type of fade with Blythe quick snap out in the flat got it to Catlett the big uh, tight end slash fullback they lined him up in the backfield as well I really like that when they went for it the short yardage play earlier when they came out of break and Iowa State ran to the line and ran a running play that time they came out the exact same formation but they decided to do a play action they did have Blythe looking like he was running open but took the underneath man Catlett if you just joined us or just uh, tuning in 21 to nothing KU 12th play of the drive this started back at Iowa State's 21 yard line Meyer looking for the end zone and he just overthrows this one as Blythe was being held up in the end zone there were two men right there and he had no place else to go very unusual for Kansas 39 yards of this drive have come on penalties yeah it's uh, you just don't expect that from Kansas this season but Iowa State needs to convert here three points is not a conversion in my book I, I, I think here at second and goal you're in a throwing situation Meyer can run maybe roll the pocket to the wide side of the field but you've got to come away with seven you get that gut feeling Kansas is just rolling on offense well this time to lead comes over to the left side of the formation and the pitch back comes to Robinson and Robinson will take it in for the Iowa State touchdown What an excellent job by Derek Catlett. He got out in front of that pitch and threw a great cut block that allowed the running back to get the corner. Culbertson to attempt the extra point, try to make this a 21 to 7 ball game. And he got it. So let's take a timeout. 3.54 left until halftime. Robinson takes it in for the score. It cuts the KU lead to 14. Have to execute it, and that was a really nice job by a guy who Catla goes back and forth between fullback and tight end. He's got yeah. to know, know a lot of different positions, but that was excellent execution. I got in big block letters from talking with the Iowa State staff. Really good blocker. And boy, he demonstrated it right there. This is Herford. And Herford takes quite a hit at the 25. And the 
So for the Kansas Jayhawks, 21 to 7, Iowa State has cut into their lead. And the only thing I think that Mark Mangino is really going to talk about at halftime, penalties that just normally don't occur. 39 yards in that drive alone for Iowa State. So Iowa State sticking around. And don't forget last week, yeah. this team, Iowa State, believes they can do it. They did it against Colorado. So they're not going to come in here and, and flinch. They know they can come back from this deficit. Jake Sharp, good block there, has five, has ten, and he's off to the races. He's going to take it out to midfield before John Banks can come over and make the tackle. That's good for 25 yards for Sharp. And Sharp is the guy who comes in to add the speed. McAnderson is the power, power guy, but Sharp does run with some power. He is not, he's not trying to run uh, around guys all the time. He's got that high knee action. Kind of has that little bit of Roger Craig thing going where his knees are up so high that it's hard to get a good hit on him. Pass thrown to Fields. And that's uh, close to another first down. Earlier we asked you the Aflac trivia question. Who was the last Kansas Jayhawk quarterback to play in the Pro Bowl? Well, here's the answer. Well, I, I already guessed uh, uh, John Hadel. I'll go with Hadel. So who was it? Nolan Cromwell. Hey, guys, can I go with Nolan Cromwell? <laughs> you just got it in under I, the wire, Jack. I, I'm Good not job. Sure, I'm not sure Nolan would enjoy that <laughs> if you went with him, but he was uh, an outstanding defensive back in the pros. Wow, what a hit on Sharp. And I mean, Sharp went backwards. That was a hit by Hunley, Brandon Hunley, a junior out of Grandview, Missouri. Take another look at this. Oh, this, is, this is face to face. Pow. Nice clean hit, too, with the oh, shoulder. You love I'm to see you. that with a guy who has his head up and uh, puts a shoulder in there instead of his hel helmet. Sharp turns the corner, hurdles one man, and he's close to another first down. They'll say he stepped out of bounds at around the 27. Hundley pushed him out of bounds again. You know, you think about what Kansas had to do in their running game. It's very easy to forget that they had John Cornish last year who rushed for almost 1,500 yards. And so McAnderson and Sharp have filled in and they haven't missed a beat. Reesing looks back over at the sideline as usual on the check with me and Sharp hit behind the line of scrimmage and knocked down by Bowen. Ace Bowen out there defensively. Coming up on the Capital One Halftime Report, John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie in our Time New out. York studio. They'll have scores yeah, and highlights and uh, also a report on the LSU Tigers who are playing in Oxford, Mississippi today as a timeout is called here on the field. So we'll go with them. 217 left until the halftime. 21 to 7 Jayhawks. That was the last time it happened. Five count them. Five people split to the bottom of your screen for Kansas. They <laughs> Reesing is all alone and they are going to throw to Meyer so to set up a screen on the outside and it went for okay yardage but nothing stupendous. Berg is the man who will get credit for the tackle. I talked about Meyer in you know, if you gave an unselfish award and really didn't get to complete the thought, but, you know, he could have pouted about losing his uh, job as starting quarterback, but all he did was go to the coaches and, and said, hey, I want to contribute. Use me any way you can. So then they started using him at tight end some, then at wide receiver. He's had some really big clutch catches this year. He's got a bright future there, too, and I think that move is going to be good for him down the road as well. Racing throws it complete. Broken tackle. And this is going to be to the 19 yard line. Uh, Nick Anderson on the receiving end. Jesse Smith defensively. You know, that's exactly what Ed Warner said. He's obviously Mick Anderson's a big, powerful guy, but he said for as big as he is, he has the uncanny ability of making the first guy miss. Yeah. You know, if someone's unblocked or there's an open field situation, he's got just enough wiggle to make those guys miss. And, you know, the coaches maybe didn't recognize it until this year. But for starters, you don't 
look at a guy built like that as a person who makes folks miss. They normally just try to go over you. Lobs this one for the end zone, and there's Meyer. Touchdown. The number one quarterback throws to the number two quarterback. Touchdown, Jayhawks. Look at the smile on Reesing's face. Gary Meyer, the young man that we were just talking about that uh, has been so totally unselfish and has done nothing but just say, hey, let me help my football team, and he has done just that, and he showed just why right then. Well, he double-caught it, so they're going to go review it. It looked to me like he brought it in. He definitely bobbled it there for a second, but it looked to me like he had control of it before he went out of bounds. Let's take a closer look. If he had boy it was close but I close, think he, did. he, he had mm -hmm. gathered it in and it would appear on that replay right there worth reviewing though and uh, you know this is why we have you know, looked like just right at the last second yeah. he did gain control of the ball but mm -hmm. very close. Yeah he's got it right there and his feet are both mm -hmm. feet are still in bounds. Yeah I noticed he and uh, Reesing are now sporting the beards. <laughs> Todd Reesing. After review the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. And you remember this as a ball player. One guy would do it, and then ten others would do it. Say, so that's a good idea. It's like right? the mohawk thing that's going around right now. I think I'd rather have a yeah. beard than a mohawk. Yeah, Jack's going for one of those. You know that by next week. This is a reverse mohawk, though. Easy. <laughs> Extra point attempt is up, and it is good. So with 156 showing on the clock in this first half, our new score, Kansas 28 in Iowa State 7. Well, he, of the bottom three receivers, he's the inside receiver, and he's just running right down the seam. And you can see he's going to split those safeties. A good little stutter, and the safety cannot get back over. And a really good throw by Reesing, too, to recognize the safety was late getting over there. And the safety on the play, Hundley, just couldn't quite get there. And let's go down to Jack Aru. Jack? You know, Ron, if you really want an indicator of just how selfless Gary Meyer was, remember you were telling the story about going to the coaches. Well, how about the day that he was informed that he had been beaten out by Todd Racing for the position of quarterback? The SID here went to him and said, look, I, I know you probably don't want to talk to the media. The media really want to get your thoughts. Gary Meyer stepped right up to the plate and said, no, that's okay. I'll answer any of the questions they want. This is a high spinner going to come down at the seven to Summerall. Summerall breaks it open out across the 30 to the 35 37 yard line. Now let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Well for Kansas on offense it has been an absolute clinic so far. Marcus Henry on a drag route a great job that was after two touchdowns by Fields and then the excellent block by Catlett. Springs Robinson and then it's quarterback to quarterback racing to Meyer with a nice catch but racing has been just absolutely sensational so far today people want to know is he going to start getting into the Heisman conversation well it's 17 for 18 for 221 in the first half and a big game next week against Missouri he may well get into the conversation well this pass is thrown complete and running out of bounds at around the 40. Total yardage in the ball game, K-State 300 or in Kansas, 320 yards. And for Iowa State, with a gain of about four on that one, it's going to be 132. Iowa State has done a couple of things that have looked pretty good. They've gotten a keep to leave on a double move earlier by Marquise Hamilton. So they've got a couple of things that are that look like they can work. They just can't let Kansas continue to come back on the field. They've got to be able to eat some clock and with a minute 43 and one timeout. Could All be a hurry up situation. Offense. Number 73, five yard Reggie penalty. Stevens uh, took a step back. Kansas actually was walking three people up in the middle of the formation as though they were going to come with a blitz. And if you're Kansas, you flop the 
timeout thing over. And I would start to think about, you know, if you get into a third down situation, maybe using one of your timeouts at least to see if you can get Iowa State into a punting situation. Mortensen stepped up and then steps back. Myers pass is caught. Boy, that's a nice job of reaching high. Marquise Hamilton. Marquise at 6'3", 220 pounds, a very big target, and watch him reach up and snag this one. Well, and Hamilton, a guy that they've really had to rely on as the third receiver. Todd Blythe and R.J. Sumrall are the two guys they go to the most often, but they needed to find a third guy, and Hamilton, they really didn't know much about him coming into the season, but he, he just he, kept working hard, working hard. He's only a sophomore also. They're going to have him for a couple of more years. Just throws this one away. That ball looked like it might have slipped out of his hand. Well, it could have. Yeah. He, he, uh, even for a throw away, it didn't look right. No. He had a receiver running an outcut there. Let's take a look and see if it did come out. No. I mean, it, it didn't look like it moved in his hand at all. Maybe he was trying to throw it away. So second down and 10. Clock shows 133 to play. Here comes pressure from the backside, and it gets off that screen to Robinson. Robinson able to turn the corner just partially. And Muhammad is the man who uh, who forces him out. Boy, that was a nice job by Brett Meyer getting away from the pressure. James Holt was the man coming with some severe pressure. Number 12. Watch the blitz coming off the left side. And watch Brett Meyer work away from it, knowing that they're not blocked. He could see them in his peripheral vision. And a good job just buying enough time, knowing that they were setting up the screen to Robinson. And Robinson did a good job of running away from Jeff Wheeler to get out of bounds. Eight, 11 of 18 for 83 yards for Meyer. Blitz comes again, this time Mortensen. Meyer going to run, and he will have the first down on that lunge. He'll take it just around the 35-yard line. Wheeler will be credited with the tackle. You want to hustle up because even though the clock stops, it will start once they reset the chains. You got to save that timeout. They burnt those two timeouts because they didn't like personnel earlier. So now just working with one. You got to be able to save that in case you're going to have to get your field goal unit out there. Meyer throws it away, and there we had an obvious hold. I think Diedrich is the man who was holding on James Holt. Yeah, they, and that's the reason the crowd is uh, they were screaming. Yelling. They didn't think it was going to get oh, called. Offense, 75, 10-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Repeat first down. They were, the reason the crowd was screaming was they were expecting a flag to come from Tom Walker, the referee, but he had to turn and run for his life a little bit there, so it came from the line judge on the far side of the field. Good pickup. There's your hold right there. Oh, there's a couple of different holds. It looked to me like Jake Laptad was being held as well. You know, actually, I think according to the new breakdown, the way officials uh, do it, the back judge actually is responsible for the tackles in the end. I think the two guards in the center are the ones that the umpire looks at. Sings this one complete at the 40 yard line. That'll stop the clock with 105 until halftime. Summerall on the receiving end for the Cyclones. Doing a nice job of working the sidelines, getting people close there so they can get out of bounds. With a minute five, but now you're in that position where you have to start thinking about it. Second and 15. We, we've got to start getting down in there to get that first down because if you're Iowa State, you're thinking seven here, not three. Three is not going to be enough in this ballgame. Good look at uh, Todd Blythe. He is the man at the bottom of your screen. Meyer rolls it, now delivers, and he's got it to Blythe. Nice catch in traffic at the 30. That's good for 10 yards. Well, trying to get a play in. They don't want to use that timeout. Taking a little too much time here. Eight or ten seconds before they're going to get this snap off. Forty seconds left until halftime. 
Those far sideline had a man out there, and that's thrown just a little too far in front of Summerall. Meyer wanted that ball back right when he threw it. And of course, you're going to go for it here on fourth down if you're Iowa State. But they had Summerall right where they needed it. And Rivera was the man who was leaping on the play, trying to distract the quarterback. Clock stops 33 seconds, 33 until halftime, 28 to 7. KU on top. I would think something very similar to that. You've got three receivers to that side, run two of them off, and maybe Summerall again on the outcut to pick up the first down. Meyer running for his life. Throws underneath, and the ball in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, who was Marquise Hamilton. Now, the bad news for Iowa State is they give the ball back, and Kansas has two timeouts and 26 seconds left with pretty good field position. Yeah. I, I think it was the right idea to go for it on fourth, but uh, the, everybody was covered. Good call by Bill Young to bring some pressure. Anytime, particularly on a sprint out, you get that quarterback moving backwards mm -hmm. and to the side, you got <laughs> a lot of help from the sideline and, and everything else. Just hard for him to see what's going on. Now, Mark Mangino is going to be happy with 28 7. He, he could have done something here, but I can see what he wants. He's got 28 7. It felt to me like they may go out there and try to. They were in such good rhythm offensively, felt like they might want to go for something. So we still got 10 seconds on the clock and you can see that uh, Jack Arud is already standing by the side of the KU head coach. Let's go down to you Jack. All right coach give me a grade on the performance of your team in this first half. Well I don't know. I'm not much into grading but I'll, I, I think our offense has played very well. We've moved the ball at will uh, executing very well on defense. We gave up a drive there. We must have had 50 or 60 yards in penalties. That's not the type of defense we play. It's uncharacteristic for us, but we'll get it fixed up at halftime. All right, coach. Thanks. All right, Jack. So our score at halftime, 28 to 7, KU on top. Now let's join John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie in our New York studio. KU guys scored on four consecutive that's what we possessions. About the open the show, so I, I think you go right back to that plan if you're Iowa State. You can see Todd Reesing on the sideline there. Maybe that ankle uh, is getting better and better. He was doing a pretty hot step there. Line drive going to be taken at the end zone line by Moses. 25 and out all across the 30. And let's check in with Jack Aru. Jack, what do you got for us? Well, Ron, let me give you the inspirational speech that Coach Chiswick gave to the Iowa State Cyclones. I asked him, I said, what'd you tell him? He says, Jack, quite simply, I told him they can't tackle. They can't play defense. They can't play offense. And as they play like that in the next 30 minutes, we'll get beat by 100 points. He walked out about three minutes ahead of the rest of the team. God only knows what the team said after the coach slammed the door. Okay, Jack. Well, it's, <laughs> you know, I'm sure that a lot of times coaches are tempted, really, to say just that. Guys, you're just stinking the place up. Now, you make up your mind if you want to play or not. And how many times have you seen it where the kids come out and say, you know, let's let's prove him and everybody wrong. Well, and this is the last game of the season for Iowa State. Don't you think for a minute that these coaches are not going to break down every second of this second half and say who was in it and who was out of it, who was given full effort, who was not? Down 28 to seven, they're already starting to think about spring practice and building that uh, depth chart. Arnaud comes in to open the second half of play. Hands off on a running play, Robinson, and he will go for very short yardage. Right now, let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Well, for Iowa State, when they've been out there, it's been okay. Offensively, they're not doing bad. They're, you know, four and a half yards per play. The problem is they're playing against an offense in Kansas that is just, it's unbelievable how well they're playing. 8.8 .8 yards per play. You get up near nine yards. That's, that. they're really humming along. And, but the penalty is the only thing that really jumped out for Kansas, just not like them. But uh, like I said, for Iowa State, when they've been on offense, has not been bad. They just are playing against another offense from Kansas. Just lights out right now. Renata hands it off to Robinson. Robinson will go for very short yardage. It's going to bring up third down. They'll still need about three for the first down or a little bit longer. James Holt and Mortensen along with uh, Rivera combining on the stop. And we have mentioned those three linebackers for KU a lot today. Mortensen, Holt, and also Rivera. And with Arnott in there, you still have the opportunity to throw the deep ball. 
right now and Arnott is a, a very good guy outside of the pocket so you can move him and maybe look for a run pass option here. KU creeping up at the line of scrimmage they come off the corner with the blitz pass is thrown complete at the 50 yard line and that is to Marquise Hamilton that's good for 11 yards and he'll move the sticks. You know it's nice to see Arnaud come in. He's a local guy from right there in Ames, Iowa. Mm -hmm. Was obviously was obviously uh, recruited by Dan McCarney. And then a new staff comes in. He has to learn an entirely new offense from what he learned his true freshman year. And Brett Meyer has been helping him, and they've been working together. And he comes in, and they don't miss a beat offensively. Right? Guy has a mastery of this offense that you don't expect from a retro freshman. Big fella, too, at 6'3, 222. He's going to go on top on this one. Got a man there, and it is thrown out of bounds. It's Blythe, the man that he wanted. Uh, but Todd, by the time he would have uh, gathered it in, was off the field of play. Well, the thing that they'll start to do in coaching up Austin Arnott, looking into next year, now he won't have Todd Blythe to throw to anymore, but when you have that deep, Comeback or out cut route under throw that ball if the coverage is there. He tried to hit Blythe too perfectly yeah. and the coverage was there. Well, the defensive back's going to turn his head later than your receiver. So if you under throw it when it's covered, it gives your receiver a chance to either get PI or come back and make the play. Pass thrown complete at the 50 yard line. And that's Summerall. Summerall will have two yards in the play, and it's going to be third down and long. Joe Mortensen again from his linebacking position there to make the tackle. Again, I would look at something when you're at third and eight. Look at something to the multi-receiver side where you're running off people and you have somebody breaking off short. The key for Arnaud, though, it's got to get protected here. It's going to take a while for these routes to break open. KU looking for the situation. Only got a three-man rush. Linebackers show blitz. Here comes one of them. Throws the ball almost intercepted. Well, this is decision time, I think. They're sending the punting unit out. You're over midfield. Probably the right decision. If it were fourth and about three, I would think about going for it. But right now, unfortunately for Iowa State, having to punt back to an offense, that the only thing that stopped them was the end of the half. It was Stuckey that came close to picking that ball off. Webb is the deep man for KU. Another good high hanging kick. Bounds it to five. Iowa State is right there. And did he secure it before he got in to the end zone? I think that ball's on about the five inch line, and I think that's the right call. In college football, the only thing that matters is does the ball break the plane? Yeah. And it looked to me like the ball did not break the plane. I think that's the right call. Yeah, it doesn't matter where Rob the body is. Robinson is the man who got down there on the coverage. And uh you see the ball batted. The ball did not break the play to the goal. There's right. your First explanation. Down. Well, and, and good for good for them. Good for Tom Walker for making that explanation. Because some people, and a lot of them in the crowd here, think that that should have come back. It has nothing to do with his Body. feet, though. That's Just true. the ball. A nice job by Raymond Pendleton. Jumping up and tipping this thing back to keep it in the field of play. Watch the ball. It was close. Pretty close. We're right there on the line to see it. But I think that was the right call. Great job by our camera guys to get a shot of that and let's uh, take a really close look. Well, they're they're going to review this, I believe, because our camera guys were so good that uh, I think they may have given pause to the replay officials that that ball may have broken the plane. Here's the one that'll tell you. This is not a challenge by Kansas. It is a booth review. So the, the Tom Walker just saying that uh, the timeout was not called by Kansas to challenge this. 
I, I don't think it broke the plane. I, I just I didn't see the ball clearly break the plane. And remember the rule is it has to be indisputable video evidence. Boy that shot there makes it look like it may have when he swung that ball forward. It may have gone in front of it. Big difference. <laughs> I'm telling you what now. Ball on the one foot line versus the 20. Yeah, I'm telling you. Um. I used to hate that drill in practice. It's wor almost worse than goal line, the take it out drill, where you'd be down on the, your own goal line having to bring it out. Boy, you just had to pound it out of there. Well, here comes uh, the results. After review, the ruling on the field is reversed. The ball broke the play of the goal. It'll be first and 10, 20 yard line. Yeah, it was that last angle where it looked like when Alexander Robinson kind of, you know, when he put the ball, it looked like maybe his hand movement, maybe right at the very end. Watch. Yeah. I could see that. It was close, but I can see why they overturned it. Yeah, and, and again, for people watching at home, too many people mistake the fact that his feet has nothing, nothing to do with anything. It is the ball. Did it break the plane or not? Show it is first down at the 20 yard line, and Reesing throws another completion. And this one to Fields. And Fields will take it out to around the 26 yard line. And look at the difference of the offense you can call now. You can do the, the whole playbook is open, whereas if you're in your own end zone, if you throw it, it's got to be a real quick three step get it out. The one thing I've been so impressed with, and we've seen Kansas a couple of times this year, is how hard their receivers work when they don't have the ball. These guys are so good down the field blocking for each other and on running plays. Fields, now this is a season high for him. Eight catches, 88 yards, and two touchdowns. McAnderson, and McAnderson takes the swing pass, and he'll go for the KU first down, coming out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Well, and once again, Desmond Briscoe just doing such an amazing job. Watch how much he stays alive. This is a design swing pass. They're going to it right now. But watch Briscoe. He never gives up on the play. He's working one on one on Devin McDowell. McDowell makes a nice move to the inside, but Briscoe never gave up. Desmond, uh, a freshman this time last year, was playing high school football at uh, Cedar Hill is uh, the Dallas area. That's only the second incompletion. That ball that goes incomplete right there. Derek Fine, the intended receiver. One uh, other note on Briscoe. Uh, the coaches talked at length Thursday on the practice field about how this young man has not only learned the system, but how he has matured very quickly and learned uh, more and more about what it's about. And he's done it in practice, and, and that has given confidence to Todd Reesing because he says, you know what, if he's doing it in practice, he's going to do it in the game, and he's looked at him more often. Well, the state shows blitz. You can see Reesing pointing at that linebacker, but he stayed at home, and Reesing is going to be hit as he throws, and he threw it away. That's Jesse Smith, who was coming after him in a hurry. And now he is limping a little bit more after that play. Well, those are the dangerous ones when someone lands on the back of your leg. He's shown pretty good acceleration. Can't quite get out to full stride, but let's see if that left ankle. Not too bad. Not too bad. Not too bad. You know, if he if it would have stayed on the ground and Smith would have landed on it, you'd be concerned. But it looked like, like he got it up yeah, on it purpose to yeah. make sure that you might be right. Got, got elevated, it would not get pinned underneath him or next to the turf. Third down, they need to take it out to the 45-yard line to keep this drive going. Pressure, and he's going to be sacked. You know, he's going to make it back to the line of scrimmage. They may not get credit for a sack, but it'll be a gain of about a half yard, and that's it. And that's Parker, Rashawn Parker, who came in uh, to put the clinch on him. What a great stop by Iowa State defensively, and that was pressure. Wayne Bolt, the defensive coordinator, going back to what he did in that first half, trying to get pressure, and that time they were able to get to him, to Reese twice. Well, this is the way they started the ball game. On the opening series, they forced KU into a punt. 
False start. Offense, 85. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. And let's not forget what Gene Chiswick is. Gene Chiswick is a head coach at Iowa State because of what he did as a defensive coordinator. And uh, talking to him this morning about the transition to being a head coach, he said it's been hard because I used to be able to know exactly what the offense was doing all the time, and now I just can't study as much film, and he's had to turn it over to a trusted guy in Wayne Bolt, but it's been a difficult transition for him. Line drive kick. Blythe with the fair catch makes it at the 35-yard line, and it is a 35-yard punt. So Akeem Tlaib gets an opportunity to play defense on the series that is uh, about to come up. So welcome back to Lawrence, Kansas. 10.47 left in the third quarter. 28-7. The Jayhawks on top, and we'll see Iowa State on offense again. Brett Meyer will go with quarterback here. You see a change, maybe? Well, it looked to me like on the sidelines they may have been talking about going to a hurry up and uh, maybe trying to get in some rhythm and knowing that the clock's going to start melting on them. Well, look to his left and then look back to the right and then threw it away. Marquise Hamilton was the closest man to it. And he just got rid of it. They are going to huddle. It looked to me during the break like they were discussing a hurry up type situation. Uh, but with an incomplete pass obviously you can huddle. I would think if they end up in a situation where the clock's running they may go to a hurry up. Summerald wide to the right. He's the man at the bottom of your screen. Option play and the pitch back comes to Robinson. Robinson caught by the shoulder pads and knocked down. Matt Weiner let's check with you in New York. All right, Ron, here's our nominee for the Pontiac game-changing performance. Kentucky leading 10-7 between the hedges till Keelan Johnson blocked the punt. Six plays later, the Bulldogs cashed in with a Thomas Brown touchdown run to take the lead for good. Check out this season's best Pontiac game-changing performances at ESPN.com. Search Pontiac. Okay, Matt, 11-point lead now for Georgia. I think everybody's learned their lesson over there in the SEC, I mean, LSU certainly has, about taking Kentucky lightly. Third down. Throws this one way overthrown, and Meyer is hit just as the ball is delivered. Laptad was the man who was putting on pressure. Jake, a freshman who this time last year was playing high school football at uh, Jinx High School in Oklahoma, just outside of Tulsa. It was two... Too quick three and out. Uh, I wouldn't want my defense going back out. The D, your defense for Iowa State had a nice stop the last time and just nothing going for Iowa State offensively. Tough to put that defense back out there that quickly. Foster and Webb, a dual safety for the Jayhawks this time. Uh, you're going to have an interference with the ability to catch. This should be a five-yarder on Iowa State tacked onto the punt. Now well, that's going to be 39 yards on the boot and then the step off. Well, that's Ace Bowen, who's mm -hmm. their leading tackler, coming up a little gimpy. Ace led the entire country last year with almost 13 tackles per game. It's a junior college transfer. Kick catch interference. Kicking team. 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Excuse me, 15 yards, not yes. five. Yep. Remember we saw that in Austin. Yes, uh, we sure did. Just last week. 28 to 7 our score. We're going to take a timeout. 940 left to play in this third quarter as uh, Kansas will come back on offense. Now they take it back. They, they may not. After the penalty, first down at the 37. So they're going to keep it right here. No timeout called. Sharp in the backfield. Shotgun formation again for Reese. Sharp. Boy, quick feet right there as the hole was clogged, and he still picked up about three and a half yards. 
Ron Franklin, Ed Cunningham, and Jack Aroot coming to you from Memorial Stadium in Lawrence, Kansas, as the third-ranked Jayhawks with a commanding 28-7 lead and anxious, I'm sure, to see what the BCS is going to say on Sunday night since Oregon got knocked off uh, on Thursday night football on ESPN, losing to Arizona. Reese got a man wide open, and that's Henry. Big Marcus Henry makes the catch and then is shoved out of bounds at the 39-yard line, and that is good for 20 yards on the play. Hundley finally made the stop, and a flag is down. Way back. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense number 29. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic. First down. Ray Sean Parker. Yeah, you, you just don't. He, if he would have just stopped, there's just no reason for that final push. You can throw your hands up in the air all you want, but if you'd have pulled off and not done it, you wouldn't <laughs> have given 15 more yards on top of the Marcus Henry reception. Yeah, so that makes it a 35-yard play now. 20 on the reception, 15 on the penalty. Rayshon just a sophomore, so he gets to feel the wrath for a couple more years. And sure they'll work on these things during the offseason. You get a feeling that Gene Chiswick is a is a work hard coach. He, he will, he'll put <laughs> no his finger question. down, put his yeah. thumb on some guys if he doesn't feel like they're doing it right. No nonsense, you're yeah. right. For the play action this time, and he throws Henry again, and he dropped the ball. I'm not so sure that one didn't get tipped a little bit. You know, I, I, it looked like it may have. That was a good break on the ball by Brandon Hunley, the safety. And it sure looked like he may have just gotten a touch. Watch his 20 flashes right in front of Henry. If the ball's spiral changes. Tough to tell, but let's see here. No. That's drop. Turn around, walk in, touchdown. It, it looked like Henry couldn't decide how he wanted to catch it. Yeah. If anything, maybe go down and put your body underneath of it. McAnderson into the middle of the line, takes it to the 20, and that's Curtis Taylor who will make the tackle. And let's go down and check in with Jack Root. You know, fellas, one of the things that Gene Chizik talked about is he had to change the culture when he got to Iowa State. He also got all his coaches together and said, we have to figure out how to go recruiting creatively. And he said, we asked three questions. We said, one, where do we have existing relationships at the high school level, each and every individual coach? He says, let's comb the state of Iowa and take the best. And then the one I found most intriguing, where are the big cities that a recruit can board a direct flight to Des Moines. That's where he wants to recruit. It's a great point. It's something that you never think about, though. Fade route for Henry. Couldn't come down with it uh, at the three-yard line, and that's Chris Singleton, who was out there with uh, the coverage on the play. Well, the logic behind that, where they want direct nonstop flights into Des Moines from large areas, and it's very smart. You know, those recruiting trips are in December and January when you have bad weather. And he said the, the worst thing you could have is if a recruit has to catch a connecting flight and then spend the night in an airport. He's not coming to your school if he has to do that. Scott Webb in to attempt a 37-yard field goal squarely in the middle of the field. And he got it right down the middle. So let's take a timeout. 7.53 remaining third quarter. And our new score is Kansas 31 and Iowa State 7. We'll be right back. Obviously excited about the way the season is going. If they can hold on for oh, about 23 more minutes, they'll go to 11 and 0 on the season. Who would have thought it? And who would have thought how big the game next week in Kansas City at Arrowhead Stadium was going to be? If you pulled everyone in the Big 12 and said, "What was the? What's going to be the biggest game of the year?" I don't think there's one person in this conf conference who would have said. Kansas versus Missouri in Arrowhead Stadium Thanksgiving weekend. I, I don't know that anybody would have thought that. No, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. In fact, they probably would have said the biggest game of the year would be uh, Oklahoma and Texas because whoever wins that probably is going to win the conference. And of course, Oklahoma can still put themselves in a position to boast that. There's a lot of football to be played as Moses makes the return. And the flag is down as he'll take it out to the 34-yard line. Well, 
Oklahoma plays in Lubbock tonight against Texas Tech on ABC and if they win that or win their last game against Oklahoma State they will represent the South in the championship game against the North winner which looks like it's going to come out of that Missouri Kansas game next week. During the return illegal block in the back return team number 25 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul first down. And let's go to New York and here's John Saunders John. Sports Center minute powered by Vizio Ohio State beating well 62 yards on this touchdown run Ohio State beats Michigan and wins at birth to the Rose Bowl Michigan has announced a 10 a.m. press conference for Monday expected to be Lloyd Carr's retirement Vanderbilt kicker Bryant Kentenfeld had a chance to win the game but he doinks it off the upright and they lose to Tennessee by one as a result Tennessee alive to reach the SEC championship game they just have to win next week for Philip Fulmer and crew back to you Ron. OK John thanks very much boy that's what a tough one to live with when you boink it off the the upright like that and an opportunity to win that's what all kickers dream of to have that situation particularly against one of your absolute biggest rivals yeah and for Lloyd Carr I think I, I get it I understand you know with what he did this year after that tough start if he's ready to retire I think this is a great time for him to do that Robinson's going to be stopped after a gain of one I just say this I've I've known Coach Carr for for a lot of years and uh, I just I really respect him and I boy, wish him all the best and I'm sure whatever decision he makes is going to be you know the best one not just for himself but for the University of Michigan because he loves that place he loves those kids yep. and uh, you know I just you know I wish him well and I hope that decision is one that that he's happy with that everybody's happy yeah and I, and I think the timing's good well it'll be interesting to see what he does you know Michigan obviously going to a bowl game is he going to coach or is going to let one of his assistants be the interim head coach but uh, I think the timing's good because now he can be involved in the process of who's going to take over the job Arnaud's going to keep the ball broke one tackle and now is going to be gang tackled at the 19 Jack Arup, check back with you yeah Ron Ed was talking about the fact that at the beginning of the season nobody gave Kansas any credit to have this kind of a season well Ed I hate to say it you were wrong <laughs> there was one player by the name of Akeem Tlaib that predicted at the Big 12 preseason meetings that the Kansas Jayhawks would be 9-0 and everybody literally laughed him out of the locker room now who's laughing <laughs> Tlaib says I wish I had predicted undefeated instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Jack, it doesn't count. He's on the team. He's got to think that way. <laughs> I think he was the only one on the team that thought well, that. You might be right. Third down for Iowa State. They've got to take this one out to the 30-yard line. Or not to throw. Have time to get it away. And up the far sideline, Blythe thought that probably there should have been a defensive holding call but there was no flag oh there is a flag okay yeah we see yeah. it back at the 39 yard yeah, line they threw it early in the route which makes you think it's defensive holding and that's yeah that's what he's yeah. alluding to exactly and Blythe and it's against the young man we were just talking about yep. <laughs> top receiver working one on one yeah he's got that left hand there the whole time you know, in college football, if you're equal to or in front of the receiver, as long as the ball's not, yeah, that 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 would be holding. <laughs> you think that one you cut out and you put on the reel for the uh, referees Pass that you're. Defense. The penalty, first down, the spot of the foul. First down. Now the reason it's pass interference and not defensive holding is the holding happened while the ball was in the air, and so then it becomes the bigger pen penalty of of uh, pass interference. But that's the one you lop off and teach officials what. Pass interference is. Well, again, what we talked about uh, back in the first half is Mark Mangino is going to have something to visit with his ball club about before they play Missouri next week, and that is a boatload of penalties, and it's simply something that KU has not been doing all season long. Pressure. 
He got the fakes done, but then all of a sudden he got Joe Mortensen, and he didn't want to hand it off to Joe, and he knocks him down for a loss. It's the first time that they will have been credited with a sack of the Iowa State quarterback. Well, Mortensen does such a great job of not buying into the fakes. Watch him just read this whole thing out. He sees that the running back doesn't have the ball, just changes his course. He did not bite on the fake to J.J. Bass at all. And sometimes you, you can't see the ball, so you've got to stay with your assignment, which would have been the running back there, but that's a nice job of recognizing where the ball was by Mortensen. J.J. Bass, number three, remains in the ball game at tailback for Iowa State. They throw it back the other direction and got that one complete to Barkham at the tight end. John Larson was applying pressure, number 87, for the Jayhawks defensively. The defensive line for Kansas is doing a really nice job on some of those one-on-one -on -one pass rushes. And that time, Larson, who's a junior, very smart guy on and off the field, 3.69 GPA in economics. You know, Bill Young, the defensive coordinator, said this is the smartest group I've ever had, and they could do a lot of different things because of that. And they've shown that now with a three-man line, I would expect pressure from one, maybe two of those linebackers. Pass for the near side, and that's going to be well overthrown. Moses, the man that he intended the pass for. You know, when we were speaking to Bill Young, the defensive coordinator for Kansas, he's been a defensive coordinator at Tulsa, Ohio State, Oklahoma, USC, and now Kansas. And he said that in his 20 years of coaching, this is the most fun he's ever had yeah, with well, this I, group of guys. I, you know, I ask you, I say, boy, it's far from your first rodeo, but tell me, has this one been, you know, where does it rank? And he said, far and away, it, it, it has been the most fun. And you see why. I mean, the guys just... They can play so much defense. That time they rush three, drop eight. There's nobody for Arnott to go to. They can bring pressure. They're getting good one-on-one -on -one effort. Well, they came after the punter this time. And again, hey, well, he gets off a nice punt. This is going to go out of bounds inside the five-yard line. Wow. 61 yards on the punt by Brantner. Let's take a timeout. 31-7 KU. It's uh, Young against Young, Selvin Young, who is a Texas grad and played with uh, Mr. Young, who's the quarterback for the Titans, former teammates, and uh, Selvin had an outstanding game last week. Straight ahead with this running play, very close to 10 yards on the gain. Banks makes the tackle on Nick Anderson. Well, you're at 440 left in the third quarter. You're up comfortably. I, I, and I kind of put quotations around that but at some point you wonder if Kerry Meyer might take over at quarterback for Todd Reese and start thinking about his health and that left ankle that's a little banged up. Pitch goes to Mac Anderson has the first down and more. He's going to be out over the 30 yard line before Jesse Smith can stop him. It's a gain of 17 and Jack Aroot will check with you again. Make no mistake about it, guys. There may be a lot of people outside of Lawrence, Kansas, that aren't quite sure whether Kansas was for real. But a reporter recently asked Mark Mangino, said, what would you have said if someone had told you that your Jayhawks would be 10-0? Look at what he said. He said, if someone had told me in July we'd be 10-0, i say, what are they drinking? And let me see if I can get some of it. <laughs> we'll break out the bucket and the ladles. <laughs> <laughs> this is Jake Sharp. Breaks it, is going to have 10, still on his feet, counted off at about 17 yards. Brandon Hundley finally made the tackle. Well, there's a lot of surprises in this season for Kansas. And I think if you would have said, if someone would have told Coach Mangino that Brandon McAnderson was going to rush for over 1,000 yards when for the, his career he had 228 total yards coming in, I think he would have said the same thing. Where's Where's the drink? Because uh, Nick Anderson was a fullback, was a special teams player of the year last year, and now he's their featured running back, and he's over 1,000 for the season. Well, this is uh, Fields as they try a little razzle-dazzle, bringing him around from the wide receiving position to flip it back to him. 
and let's uh, check in with uh, with Jack Arood again. You know, maybe the bucket we talked about this recently in one of the other Kansas games we covered. Maybe it was all started. All this believing in each other and everything else was in that spirit building and chemistry building exercises where they they divvied up all the players and had them compete in all sorts of things in the offseason. I asked Coach Mangino the other day just how important did he think that was, and he said he really felt that that might have been the turning point for this team where they began to believe in themselves. And one of the things that's been interesting is throughout this undefeated season, the one thing they've all done is they haven't cared what the media or the fans or the blogs have said. They've all kept it inside the locker room. That chemistry building and that camaraderie has gone a long way, guys. Uh, Jack, you're right. And, and plus the fact that, go back to what I said off the top of the telecast today, you have to credit the head coach and the entire staff, for that matter, on the way they have made sure, even when they didn't realize they were going to be undefeated at this point of the season, that he makes sure that those players are not distracted from Wednesday on no media no nothing as far as something that could take their mind away from the ball game. I think as they go out to punt uh, I think one of the best things that Man coach Mangino said to his team is you guys should have the same friends that you had last year That's when we right. were six and six because you know what I do. I have you, you don't go don't let you know don't let people jump on your band right have the same group of people that have been with you who thick and thin. Well, let's see if this carries the end zone, and yes, it will. So 51 yards on this punt. Well, unbelievable. Kansas has never been 11 and 0. Have ne has never won 11 games. But the last time that they were 10 and 0, <laughs> Spanish American War was just ending. Not sure what we would have done if the paperclip had never been invented. It's the first time that voting machines were allowed to be used, and this is my favorite one. Dr. James Naysis, Naismith was the head coach here. And I look at that ball. Look at the lace. It looks like an <laughs> overblown football that they used to play with here in basketball. Unbelievable. And I had done my first college game. <laughs> That's right, Jack, you had. I and mean, Thomas Edison filmed it. Brett Meyer back in a quarterback, and he throws this one complete. And that's uh, Catlett, the tight end and fullback, who makes that catch out in the flat. Hey, Jack, I've got a trivia question for you. I'm ready. All right. Well, not, we've tipped it totally, but who is the only basketball coach in the history of Kansas University that does not have a winning record? Oh, it's got to be Dr. Nace. Well, that's right. I'm saying we tipped it off Thank there. you, Master of the you, Obvious. But, but you know, when, when a freshman comes to school here, that's one of many things that they have to know. Hey, what do you, you expect, noticed, for, what yeah, do you expect for a guy that, you know, started life in Springfield, Mass? <laughs> but the point is, they don't ask football questions. They ask basketball questions. Robinson back in the ballgame at tailback, and he gets the pitch, and he gets a good lead block. Well, you know, the, the one thing, talk about change in culture, when Mark Mangino came here, he said, listen, not, taking nothing away from basketball, but I want to get some focus onto football. Well, he's been able to do that. And if you look at the schools that are ranked in both the BCS and the top 25 in basketball, if you combine those two rankings, Kansas is the best basketball football school in the country right now. It's you know basketball's not going anywhere with Bill Self. That's, he's a very good coach, and they're going to be fine with him there. But you're starting to get the sense that the foundation being built by Mangino, they're going to be able to rival that for a while. Pressure is on. Ball is caught by Robinson, and somehow he came out of that thing and righted himself. Still going to lose a couple of yards on the play. Well, the one thing you notice by, from the Kansas Jayhawks is they never stop pursuing. That was an excellent job. Rivera was yeah. coming after him. Well, that was an excellent job by Robinson. It looked like that play was going to get dumped for a big loss, and he did a nice job spinning out of it, but Blue Shirts never stopped chasing him. And look on the sideline. Yeah. Kerry Meyer throwing the football, as we told you, on Thursday, he got a lot of reps, and this makes all the sense in the world for him to come in at quarterback because... You never know when you're going to need him, plus the fact when the number one is Gimpy with a bad ankle, seems like it might be a good time to let uh, Mr. Reesing yep. get a break. Tackle made by John Larson there on Robinson. That was a nice defensive play. Larson playing that defensive end spot. 
These guys are so good. You know this defensive line for Kansas has four interceptions on the year. Larson has two of those four. And it's on plays like that because they're so smart they see it happen. That time Larson sniffed out that they were going to run a screen to that side. And he got way outside and made a nice play. That's going to be the final play of the third quarter. So we're going to take a timeout. And as Kansas comes to the near sideline, a commanding 31 to 7 lead. A presentation of college football will continue after this message. And a word from our ABC station is going to go to 11 and 0 on this 2007 season. You hate to say huge third downs, and especially when it's third and 14, a tough one, but. You just saw the score by quarters. They've held Kansas. Iowa State has to three points in this quarter, but they are in the third quarter. They just need to get something going. Going to go on top, and this one well overthrown, looking for Blythe. Blythe's, Blythe has got to be frustrated because he has gotten open a couple of times today, and the ball really hasn't come close to it. Well, and, and Blythe and Meyer have both had very good careers. They're roommates, the leading passer and leading receiver in Iowa State history. And uh, tough one here for the last game of their senior year on the road to finish up. Well, Brantner has had an outstanding day punting. He's waiting back at the 16. This one not so good. And caught on the run by Red, and the ball is loose. Well, I think you may have an illegal touching, but they didn't throw a flag. Well, because an illegal Bryant's touch, you don't get a don't get a flag. You get a beanbag, don't you? Seymour is the man who came up with the football for Kansas. Take another look here. Definitely a fumble here by Webb. Did not go out of bounds, but watch Seymour. He's out of bounds, and then comes back in to make the play on the ball. I don't think that the officials saw. Usually, you'll see them throw their hat down when they see someone leave the field of play. I don't think they saw that he was out of bounds before he came back in. You can't be the first one to make a play on the ball. If you were went out of bounds of your change own at quarterback, excuse me, Kerry Meyer in the ball game, and not surprising because of the injured ankle with Reesing. Meyer is going to come in, pitches the ball back late to Sharp, and Sharp is going to be tackled. He was trying his best, and he did. He stayed in bounds so that the clock would run. Broxma is uh, the man to make the tackle. You see Reesing getting a retape on the sideline, and the reason you do that. A, he may have to come back in the game, but the reason you retape is to start getting the swelling out. Even though it didn't look to us like anything happened, he was gimpy last week against Oklahoma State, so it's a leftover injury. It didn't look like anything happened to Todd Reesing, but you still, because he moved around so much, you want to start working on getting that swelling out right now. So Meyer comes up, making sure that the line heard the audible. Blitz coming off the corner, and that's exactly where they run. And Myers going to be stopped for no gain. It'll be third down and ten. Curtis Taylor uh, there defensively. You see a little bit of a different offense being run with Meyer in there. Well, and some of those throws, the 80% completion, like last week, he had a halfback option pass for 44 yards against Oklahoma State. Don't forget, this guy was the starter last year for eight games, had some injury problems. In that middle to late part of the season. But uh, he's a very capable guy with the ball in his hands. Need to take it out to the 47. Get the pass complete, and that's Fields. And Fields is going to be shoved out of bounds just short of the first down by Berg. Kata Berg making the play. Well, and Iowa State needs to get something going. And. Uh, Sometimes because it's fourth and short you may put your safety unit out there, but it looks like they're bringing their rush unit out now. I wouldn't be surprised if they're going to try to go after this. They need some kind of momentum changing play. Blythe the deep man. Tucker the putter. There's the boot. Good high driving spiral. And this one is going to go all the way to the end zone. So he's going to wind up with 54 yards on the punt, and Iowa State will have it at the 20s. Take a timeout. We'll be right back. So Arnaud will come back in a quarterback for Iowa State. We have just over 13 minutes to play in our ball game, and it's Kansas 31 to 7, trying to go 11 and 0 on the season. 
And for those who didn't stay up real late last night, Hawaii came from behind and kicked a long field goal to win it as the clock ran out. That game was played in Reno, Nevada. And if uh, Hawaii can beat Boise State and Washington down the stretch, it looks like they will, in fact, be invited to the BCS, get into that top 12 for an automatic berth, although Boise State playing very well right now. Middle screen, the ball thrown low, and the tackle was made immediately. They're going to say incomplete. Jack Aroops, check with you. Well, I'm with a very good friend, a longtime friend, Lou Perkins, who's the athletic director here. Lou, I want to get right to it. A basketball school that now become has become a football powerhouse. What does that do in terms of the reputation of a university like KU? Well, you know, Jack, we like to think that we have a great athletic department, and and you know, I've had been asked that question, and, and we've just said all along that this is, that we can be ex excel in both, and we're really pleased that we've been able to do that. Another question for you after this play. Okay. That little Statue of Liberty here, and it's going nowhere. Well, the knee went down at around the six-yard line. Hazelhorst is a man who got Robinson. Let's go back to you, Jack. All the talk about the Big 12 and what needs to be done, and you certainly remember at the University of Connecticut as well. Tell me how important having the latest, greatest infrastructure for college football is. Well, I think anytime you can build up an infrastructure, especially in our league, you know, I, I consider our league the best college football league in the country. We got three BCS teams right now, and you know we needed to do some things and build some facilities and, and really do some things to make us competitive in the Big 12. Forty-five million dollar facility, Ron, going up over and one into the end zone. I got one more question for my friend here after this. Third down and forever for Iowa State. Our nut goes on top, and the ball is tipped. And of course, then there is no pass interference once the ball is tipped and Blythe taken out of the play. And it was Talib who tipped it. Jack? Ron, you may you know because you constantly get on my case about this, but this man was also instrumental not only, only in this story, but the story that was unfolding in Storrs, Connecticut, with the Yukon Huskies taking them to Division One. So I just want to personally congratulate you. Congratulate you. You're the architect of two great football programs and two good college basketball programs. <laughs> well, I'm just so pleased for the Huskies, and I know they won today. And Randy Etzel has done a great job there, and I'm so proud of him and what they're doing there. So it's fun to be a part of both. Yeah, and remind it, guys. They're going to beat West Virginia next week. Take it to the bank. Okay, Jeff. You got it. And we appreciate Lou Perkins coming on here with us as uh, flag is down and Webb finally pushed out of bounds across the way inside the 50-yard line. But let's uh, check on the marker first. They end up with two flags on the play. Two penalties on the return. Illegal block in the back, return team 41. Decline. Illegal block in the back, return team 37. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. So there you got it. Now let's uh, see what uh, rivalries are coming up next week. Presented by Sonic. Well, the only one that people care about in this part of the country and really most of the Big 12 is the battle for the Indian war drum. First game was in 1891. It's been known as the border showdown since 9-11. And this will be the highest ranking for both teams coming into that game. It's a neutral site, although Kansas will be the home team at Arrowhead Stadium. And tickets have been sold out for weeks and weeks and weeks. And the students here camped out for four days to make sure they got the best seats. Because new to the students, there's a sign seating at Arrowhead. They couldn't just run in and grab the best seats they wanted like they do here. Banks makes the tackle on uh, Jake Sharp. You know, for people that don't understand how big the rivalry is between Kansas and, uh, and Missouri, case in point in basketball, when Norm Stewart was coaching basketball at, uh, at Missouri, Norm would bring his team in about two hours before game time because he said he never wanted to spend a dime in the state of Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, you could take you could take rivalries to extreme, but I'll tell you, Norm was a great one, and I but I loved that the first time I heard it. He said he would not spend a dime in the state of Kansas. Marker comes down as Meyer takes the keeper out to the 45-yard line. 
Could be Herford with a hold. They needed Desmond Briscoe over on that side. He's been the good blocker downfield. Holding offense. Number 13. Yeah, that's Herford. Yeah, I don't think Coach Mangino is going to be very happy about all these penalties. Yeah. This is the least penalized team in the country. That's it's flag day. Boy, they're me. racking them up. But let's go back to that graphic about the last time. Yeah, just just held on to him there. Allen Bell for just half a second. But the last time both of these teams came into the game with 19 or more wins was 1899. The Kansas coach field and Yost. Now the bad news for Missouri. Kansas won 34 6 and that game was also played in Kansas City although Arrowhead wasn't built so that wasn't the site of the game. You see the blitz coming and the quick pass out in the flat to Sharp. And Sharp going to be Greg down at the 36. Some folks thought that could have been a face mask but there was no flag Hundley on the tackle. Yeah, it looked like Hundley grabbed the back of the helmet of Jake Sharp but that is totally legal you can't as long as you don't grab the face mask let's see where Hunley gets a hold of him yeah there's nothing illegal about that it looks bad but totally clean play eight penalties for 107 yards against uh, KU tonight well for a team that was averaging just over 30 yards on penalties that's it's pretty bad Meyer continues to operate a quarterback and we were with us earlier and uh, now have come back and turned on the ball game. Reesing as he throws a strike that's uh, complete to Briscoe. Reesing has been bothered by an ankle injury. And so Meyer, it makes all the sense in the world for them to give him an opportunity to, to also work on his timing as the backup quarterback, but also to give Reesing, you know, a break from, uh, from what's going on on the field. And the competition is going to get stiffer and stiffer. And if, if people in this part of the country want to talk about Todd Reesing for Heisman candidacy, he's going to have to do it against Oklahoma, or Missouri, and then if he gets a chance, do it against Oklahoma. For the rest of the country, I think, to start saying, yeah, th this guy belongs in that conversation because the non-conference schedule is not very good for Kansas. Meyer drills this ball, and he's got that one to Fields. Well, how about these numbers on Reesing? 21 of 26, 253 yards and four touchdowns, and 205 consecutive attempts without an interception. Uh, I go back to what Ed Warner told us, the offensive coordinator on the phone the other day. He's such a smart guy, such a competitive guy. They started to add a lot of stuff to the offense there in the middle of the season. And not that it was too much, but he started thinking a little too much. And he had a couple of games against Colorado and Texas A&M where he was under 200 yards passing. And they said, you know, we're overloading him. Let's just let him go out and execute. And since then, he's just played unbelievably well. Of course, the unbelievable game against Nebraska where they score 76 points. And then he plays very well against Oklahoma State. And, of course, lights out here today. So it looks like they made the right decision. Well, let's see. That's also the eight 200-yard passing game of the year that ties a school record. He's got a little ways to go on that beard though if he's got his wants to catch Meyer. <laughs> Blitz coming off the corner and Meyer throws up. Did he get it down? Yes, the foot was down at the 25-yard line. That's Derek Fine, the tight end. You know, a lot of people are talking about Kansas and do they deserve because they will be the new, if they win tonight, they will be the new number two in the BCS with Oregon going down Thursday night. Looks like that toe made it in bounds. Personal foul, 93. Well, Iowa State not helping themselves a personal foul against. Kelly's offset. First down. No, they had an offset, excuse me. But, but so many people have been talking about the non-conference schedule of Kansas and it was not very good. But if you go back to last year and look at Florida's non-conference schedule and it was like nobody really talked much about that. Central Florida and South Southern Mississippi pretty good opponents but Western Carolina and Florida State you know you look in there. Yeah it's probably a little better for, for Florida but it wasn't a great schedule. Blitz 
Schultz coming off the corner again, and he will make the tackle. That's Banks. And let's go down to Jackaroo. Jack? When you talk about playing non-conference opponents, you know, one of the things that's happening, guys, in the world of college football is, first, what you want to do is you want to get bowl eligible. Second, you want to try and get a BCS bowl berth. And you take a look at these non-conference opponents, more and more athletic directors have got to schedule these type of opponents to get bowl eligible. If you can win those four out of conference games, then you only have to win two more in your conference, and you're off to a bowl and additional practice. Meyer fakes the run. Quick toss to Fields. Fields will be short of the first down by about four yards as Berg brought him down now you start talking about their in conference and of course Kansas has nothing to do with that that's set by the league they missed Texas Oklahoma and Texas Tech uh, this year those teams combined coming into this weekend 25 and 7 so you say you know their schedules ranked 97 in the country it's not great but you go and beat Missouri and that's a if you go and beat Oklahoma I think you do deserve to go play for the title if it ended today I don't think so. But if you go beat those two teams, I happen to think Missouri's a very good team, and we know how good Oklahoma is. Got that pass complete, and again, it's uh, fine. Derek Fine, a senior out of Saddlesaw, Oklahoma. Looking at the schedule. Now, the key is, to me, is Kansas State, Colorado, Oklahoma State, and Texas A&M were all on the road. So granted, they didn't play Oklahoma, Texas, or Texas Tech, but those are four very good opponents that they beat on the road in tough environments. Meyer's gonna keep it at the five. Close to the first down as he hurdles. Gonna miss it by just about a half yard. But that's still a very good first down play as Hudley brought him to the turf. Well, and it's this athleticism that made the coaches feel like he would be able to do a nice job at that slot receiver spot. And it is a it is a different offense. Not that not that Todd Reeson can't run the zone read in the option, but it's just a little different wrinkle when Kerry Myers in there. This is the 11th play of the drive. It all started back at the 31 yard line. Check with knees. Iowa State moved for the last minute, so they changed the play. Pass right over the middle, wide open is Derek Fine. Touchdown, KU. Number 85, Derek Fine. Oh, it's good to see a senior get into the action on senior day for Derek Fine. And of course, Marcus Henry had that uh, beautiful. 52 yarder for a touchdown another senior that was back in the first half so Scott Webb is on to try to make it a 38 to 7 ball game and he does so let's take a break of the action 658 left in our ball game that's how long KU has before they move it to 11 and 0 38 7 been all Jayhawks here that Nebraska game boy that was a real big disappointment for those fans wasn't it <laughs> good head it's so kind of a boring game really 76 points they scored this is Moses flag and another flag has come down and on the near sideline finally shoved out of bounds Moses ran a long way for not much because it's all going to come back. Return, illegal block in the back. Return team number 20. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Now let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Well, the name of the game for Kansas was efficiency. And early on, Dexton Fields. Nice job running away from the defense. And then Reese goes to his backup quarterback, Kerry Meyer. And then Kerry Meyer gets to throw one. That time to senior Derek Fine. So for Kerry Meyer, he got to catch one today and throw one. Pretty nice day for him. 
That's interesting that uh, with the exception obviously of the field goal that all five touchdowns have come through the air. Straight up the middle big opening and this is Robinson. Robinson's going to take this thing all the way out in the vicinity of the 30 yard line. about this program when Gene Chiswick took over and, and not that the cupboards were completely bare because Dan McCartney had done a nice job at Iowa State but they only had two offensive linemen in their top 12 who'd ever stepped on the field and that group has gotten better and better and better as the year has gone on. Arnott will keep it and fights his way forward to around the 32 yard line. Well Gene Chiswick uh, you know as an assistant coach Got some good experience. He, uh, you see, the Auburn defensive coordinator, 2002 to 2004. And then he uh, went to Austin, Texas, to become the defensive coordinator, co-defensive coordinator with the uh, Longhorns. They won a national championship while he was there. And in fact, Gene went for two straight years without a loss because Auburn had been undefeated. And then when he first came to Texas, the Longhorns were undefeated to win the national championship. He's got good credentials and has studied, so to speak, under some very good head coaches. Timeout, Iowa State. First team charge timeout and a half. So we'll take that timeout with them. 532 left in our ball game, and it's a 31-point Jayhawk lead. Ten and 0 is the first time if this ends the way it should that they've ever been 11 and 0. That's Blythe, and he is defended closely there by Chris Harris. Well, Kansas defensively, so much has been said about Todd Reese and the offense and all the weapons, but Kansas defense had a little bit of a rocky run there against Nebraska and Oklahoma State, but they really buckled down today. Points allowed, they're number two in the country. They've only given up seven. And they're in the top 20 in rushing yards and total yards allowed. And, you know, you, you put so much focus sometimes on the offense and the stars and Marcus Henry and Brandon McAnderson, but Bill Young's group on defense has done really well. Life in motion, pressure, and the pass is complete for just about nothing to Alexander. It's going to be fourth down. He'll gain one on the play. That's Wright who came in to make the tackle. Well, here's that uh, Kansas defense holding five of six Big 12 opponents under 80 yards rushing. Today, Iowa State has a total of 41 yards. Mm -hmm. So they'll go to six of seven. The only team that went over that was Oklahoma State, who Oklahoma State does that to just about everybody. That's a very, very good offense over there in Stillwater. Clock running. We're under five minutes to play. Here's the boot. Brandner with a long one, and just as the ball is caught, Webb is tackled immediately with very good coverage on the part of Iowa State. Let's take a timeout. 38 to 7. Jayhawks on top, and very close to that mark. That is a big one. Talk about coming down the home stretch. It's exactly what these kids are doing right here. They're trying to make in uh, four minutes and 29 seconds their mark to 11 and 0. Then they can start talking about the showdown with uh, Missouri next Saturday at Arrowhead Stadium. Quickly in the ball game, and he gets the handoff and runs over a couple of people. Quickly he's going to have a gain of about 11 yards on that play. Berg finally made the tackle on him. Well, it's nice on senior day for some of the guys to come out. I'm sure Brandon McAnderson is the biggest cheerleader right now for Angus Quigley. You know, we did a game against Kansas against Colorado, and they told us Quigley was a young man that they really start to think mm -hmm. he's going to have promise. And when you lose McAnderson, 
the big back and quickly just a sophomore with Jake Sharp. Now you're still going to have the speed back with Sharp and quickly at 6'2, 200. Going into next year, you still have that speed size combination in your backfield. And that's uh, quickly. You bring it out close to the 40. I may have written it down wrong, but I've got him at 220. I'm quickly. 200. Oh, yeah, no. He's, he's, he's a big guy, 220. Yeah, I, don't wanna, he, I don't want to cheat him. <laughs> yeah, he, he's senior, a big fella. Senior class. Looks like they're going to go to 11 0 for the first time in school history. The highest rank ever. Defeated Kansas State three of the last four years and six plus wins in three straight years. It's the first time since the early 60s. And give these seniors a lot of credit. They bought into Mark Mangino and his staff system. They work their players hard. They demand a lot of them both on and off the field. And uh, a lot of credit needs to go to this senior class for hanging in here. Because, listen, when Mark Mangino first got here, a lot of people might have thought he was selling a bill of goods of what he thought he could accomplish at Kansas. And uh, he's proven them all wrong. Well, I remember him. There was a basketball game that night. And it, 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 we were doing a big Monday game here. And uh, Mark came into the arena. Pass is caught. John Wilson on the receiving end of that one, and there's a flag down. Partial foul, roughing the passer. Number 29 on the defense. Hell with the helmet contact. 15 yard play from the end of the run. First down. Now that's Rayshon Parker again. The second time he's been called for a personal foul on the quarterback. But there's Jonathan Wilson's that inside receiver, and the safety was just late getting out of his turn. Khalid Bird. Back to the story on Mangino. I remember we were doing a big Monday basketball game, and they said, Ron, do an interview with the new head coach of the, the uh, Kansas Jayhawks. Will be half the distance to the goal. First down. And so I remember talking to him, and I said, Mark, got your hands full. You know exactly what you're going to do. And the thing was over. He said, no, really. But he said, I do think, he said, I've got a good staff coming in here, and, and you know, we're going to try to turn this thing around. Well, they have been patient here with him. And there are times when it's good to be a basketball school because maybe you get a little more patience than than uh, usual. Is this running play going to go for the touchdown? And that's Quigley. Angus Quigley. Anyway, he certainly he had a, a very good idea of what he wanted to do, and uh, they have followed it. And look what's happening. Here's a trivia question: Who did Kansas play in Mark Mangino's first game, and what was the result? I think they played Iowa State. And they got blown I started out. to say, I think they got. 45 to 3. They got thumped. Over yeah. in Ames, Iowa. Yeah. So. This, this is Webb with the extra point. He's good. We've got two minutes and 39 seconds left in the ball game. So we'll take a break. Kansas, 45, Iowa State, 7. So we are back here in Lawrence and glad to say that the coach Gary Pinkham was on the phone with us. Uh, he has just returned to Columbia. They had a successful voyage to Manhattan today. Congratulations. And now you don't have to tell your team don't look ahead or don't talk ahead. Now ahead is exactly what everybody's going to talk about. That's next Saturday. Yeah, uh, what, what, a, what a great opportunity and uh, what, a, what a great uh, venue is going to be next week. You know, we're. Uh, we're excited about it. Uh, obviously, KU's got a great football team. They're undefeated, and uh, I think we got a pretty good team, uh, great rivalries. And, uh, and this year, uh, it, it, over at Arrowhead, it's, uh, it's got, so I think it'll be just a great, great football. Coach, congratulations. A lot of firsts going on around this area in the Big 12 North. Of course, Kansas going to 11-0. You guys beat Kansas State for the first time since 1989 over in Manhattan, a tough uh, place to play. How have you guys stayed focused? Because there has been so much pointing towards that game at Arrowhead. You played a tough opponent today. How have you guys remained focused? Well, I, I really have a real good senior class. Uh, they're, uh, they're great leaders. I meet with them every Monday. We talk about the team. Then I think as a coach, you kind of watch how you're, how you're preparing during the week or you have great focus and intensity in your practices. And then you lean on the seniors in terms of are the players doing the right things. And, and I really trust those guys. And uh, it certainly hasn't been easy. I mean, it was about three minutes left the game. Chase Daniel sideline came up to me. He said, you know, the greatest thing about this win, we can start talking about Kansas. That's true. <laughs> you know it's behind them in the back of their mind. And, uh, and uh, it's, uh, I'm really proud of our football team, and, and uh, it, it, we're really looking forward to preparing this week. And hopefully we, we play our best game next week. Gary, you know, it, 
you don't worry about X's and O's. Actually, what you worry about is what you touched on a little bit just a moment ago. We've talked all afternoon about KU and what Mark's done here, but distractions are the things that probably worry you most, isn't it? Yeah, that really is. And then I think especially if you haven't been there a lot, you know, if, you, if, if this was the this, you know, third or fourth or fifth uh, divisional championship we were going for or playing this type of game, I think it would be a little bit different. But, uh, you know, uh, you know, we'll have gone to four bowls in five years. That, that's good. And, and but we're winning at a little bit higher level. And, uh, you know, you just want your kid to, you know, we call it distraction control, to be able to eliminate all the clutter so you go out and focus and play your best game. And, uh, you know, that's that's something that uh, I think we've done a pretty good job at. You know, you're talking about your leadership coach, and, and obviously we had your game a few weeks ago against Nebraska and got to know Chase Daniel a little bit. What an amazing young man. I saw today on the sideline, you know, your guys a little bit there in the third quarter looked like they maybe lost focus for a second, and they, they had a shot of him on the sideline just absolutely laying into some guys. Talk about him as a leader and what he does to kind of keep people focused. Well, I think the players really trust him. They have a lot of confidence in him, and he's a winner. Uh, he came out of that way in high school. He's been a winner since he's been here. And he, and he, and he plays at a consistent level each and every week. That being said, he, when he says something, listen, 90% of the time he's an encourager. He's very positive. And then 10%, that's probably what happened today, where he just felt he had to make his up. Uh, you know, just do that. And, and he's, a, he's a very complete quarterback. He's, uh, he's as good as I've ever been around. Gary, thanks so much for taking time. I know you just got home. We greatly appreciate you coming on. The best of luck against this undefeated KU team next Saturday at Arrowhead. Okay, guys, thank you. Okay, thanks, Gary coach. Pinkle, really uh, good of him to pick up the phone. We had asked if uh, we could visit with him, and he said, as soon as I get home, we'll do it. Right now, we've got 21 seconds left in this one. Today's Chevrolet players of the game are John Banks for Iowa State, had 11 tackles, and Todd Reese of Kansas, 21 of 26, 254 yards, and four touchdowns. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Well, Mark Mangino just made history. First time ever. 11-0 start. Amazing, and, and there's still work to be done, though. They are standing and cheering here in Lawrence, Kansas. 11 and 0 are the Jayhawks of Kansas. Well, and Gene Chiswick now goes into his offseason. We talked about his recruiting plan. Jack gave that report, and uh, they'll get back to work. Be sure to join us tonight for Saturday Night Football. You'll see more great Big 12 action. It's number four Oklahoma takes on Texas Tech. That's tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 Central, right here on ABC. And now for Ed Cunningham and Jack Aruth, I'm Rod Franklin saying so long from Lawrence, Kansas. Once again, our final score, KU 45 and Iowa State 7. Good night, everybody.